one. Fight! Round two. Fight. You lose. everyone hey good morning everybody monday a whole weekend has passed how are you martin i'm already excited i'm already working uh, <laughs> yes he's already working <laughs> i just pressed record he's already in there doing his work let's we, check out what he's doing right we have fun stuff in, in this stream um so first of all last week was super fun three days i already um, have a lot of new thoughts and ideas and um, yeah generally we've been really happy haven't we Hannes 3000 oh it's been great simply amazing to just be sitting here day in day out showing you our work days here we are focused on getting this done so um, what's on the agenda today what's on the menu yeah good 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 um so, we have a predator in the house. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay, okay. It preys on noise. <laughs> With a tagline like that, you can't go wrong. <laughs> I just I fell off my chair when I found this image. It preys on noise. <laughs> you should do the voice, Hannes, three times. It preys on noise. Yes, there we go, there we go. <laughs> now, so, last week, let me zoom out of, of, of this... Um, uh, sketch i'm doing right now and show you a super uh, 10 second recap from last week um so we designed a properly sized funnel to avoid marbles <laughs> hitting the floor and we blocked this thing um and i've already left i'm not working on this model anymore that was just uh, early days uh, sketching and then we went ahead and to talk about gear placement and when we did that um, we had like 100 million gears, they're hidden now. Um, so the gear train looked something like this. And we started to talk about timing belts. And um, this is very fun because I love gears much more than timing belts. But in the form from function vein, I realized that we could exclude so many parts by making a gear train with very very simple gear train so only three axles instead of like six and three timing belts and then after the stream friday i set up friday evening and i found um so these products uh let's see these are the pdfs let's start from the beginning so because we already wanted to make a herringbone um uh, helical plywood gears. So I was already interested in this helical gear shape because I know from uh, Alex from Munich, Alex CNC, that um, helical gears are more silent. And then we found this self-centering belt. So we actually had problem on the original machine with um, um, belts tracking out of position. So I've been looking at this, um, I've been sitting in these PDFs the whole weekend thinking about this. And yesterday I made, um, I calculated the size. And what I'm really excited about is that if you see in this image here, let me find this gear. So here we have like the, the musical drum and we have like a separate gear. 
And now I realize, because since we're going to make these drums on our rotary CNC, Oof. we can make these gears straight into these drums. So we can actually, we don't even need this yellow thing on the side here. So this is what I'm going, this is what I'm doing right now. So let me show you, I restarted all the cutting from scratch and I have my first, so this is the first part. So this gear I made yesterday um, and I've kind of um, hacked together the shape because this is a 25 tooth gear and we want a one to eight gear ratio. So on this big one that I'm making now, we need 200 teeth. So 25 times eight equals 200. Boom. And uh, yeah, that's basically where we are. I found, um, I found the pulleys in CAD online. So here they are. And so the only little thing right now is that um, when the belt is bending in different uh, diameters, um, the tooth shape is actually changing on the pulleys. So what I did is that I uh, imported some different sample sizes from the real pulleys from the from the from the real uh, manufacturer, and I tracked kind of the tooth shape into uh, Excel. So I'm making my best guess here on the two custom pulleys that I'm making right now. So I have a 25 one and 200 tooth one, and I'm kind of tried to calculate the values here on the shape of the tooth. Since this is not precise, if there's anyone like happening to like work at Silent Sync, uh, let me see, it prays, oh, no, sorry. <laughs> so I kind of want to reach out to the manufacturer and see if they could kind of make like a proper CAD model for a 25 tooth pulley and a 200 tooth pulley with 14 millimeter pitch. Um, and that's where I am right now. So what I'm doing today will probably get perfected later in the process because I don't want to kind of make a guess around this pulley and then the belt is, is not uh, acting correctly. So let's get straight into this 200 tooth pulley. And Oof. I have some nice tricks to show you actually in CAD for how to do this properly in Fusion 360. Um, yeah, that's it, Hannes. Wow, there we go. Yeah, I think I think um, like when I thought about it, um, the positioning of all the axles. So, I, we talked about this yesterday, Hannes. Like um, on the Mar Machine X, we had thousand things that needed to be in perfect location, and I was like, "Yeah, we are good at building stuff. We can put thousand things in perfect location with a timing belt and a belt tensioner." The location, the um, tolerance the, on the demands on the tolerances is heavily reduced, which means that the axle can sit a little bit anywhere we want. And the design, when we need place for the resonator pipes, I can just move the whole programming wheel 10 centimeters and the belt will just follow. If we have a gear train, we're much, um, the tolerances are much uh, smaller for mistakes. So basically, I love gears. My heart is crying, but my brain is laughing, right? So um, the timing belt might make, it gives us some more slack for, for failing. So yeah, I'm, I'm excited about this. Let's see. Um, and we have Grant Call, Callbau. Hello from ND USA. Great seeing the creativity behind the work done. Thank you for the awesome content. Will the world tour come to the USA? And of course, when there will, when there's a world tour in the future, of course, the US is a dream location for all of us because I'm including myself into the tour. Yeah, and you just <laughs> want to see hockey, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've been ever since I was like ten. I've been dreaming about that trip, so I will force myself onto the tour, and we will be there. I promise, Hannes. Three thousand promise. U.S. tour, of course, in the future. Hannes, three thousand has never yet broken a promise. So. <laughs> there we go. There we go. And we have some good mornings from New Zealand and. Uh, People are catching us in the U.S. like immediately when they're when they're about to go to sleep. So we help them go to sleep, and I take that as a nice compliment. That means our voice are semi-soothing at least. So we're we're planning 
now we're doing like Swedish office hours and we're definitely planning to change things up and do some evenings. Yeah. So maybe we can catch uh, everyone across the pond in the morning. Um, yeah. Further, further up the road. So these tooth teeth are at a 75 degree angle. What I'm doing now is that I'm going to make a sweep and I'm programming a path to sweep along this path. So I'm putting 75 degrees right there. And then I have to remind myself about the sweep length. What was that? We have it, I think, in the other pulley I made. Let me go and find that. Because I think the tooth are the same. So here we go. Um, I think a really nice material for these pulleys would be POM. Uh, just because it's machined so nicely and it's like, yeah, I think POM. I think there's going to be a lot of parts in POM um, or Delrin. POM, POM and Delrin is, is the same thing. It's just a brand name of uh, POM. Nice, nice, nice. And we have a good, good day from the UK. And we have Quebec tuning in. Good morning from the Netherlands. Greetings from Romania. Casualty, greetings from my bathroom. Well, <laughs> thank you for that. Wonderful. And we also have Kale, who says, Ola from Funland. And Funland, well, that sounds nice, right? Fantastic. John Funland. Braithwaite. I legit legitimately... I legitimately have learned more about good engineering design from this channel than from the design module in my degree. Watching someone else learn the hard way is a great way to learn. Thanks. Uh, that's so fun to hear. I think, yeah, that's that's so fun to hear. And uh, this, this is like, yeah, I'm really proud that we've been flaunting all the mistakes since the beginning of this 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 journey. But it would also be so much fun to deliver a result one time in my life. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So now I'm going to take this. Oh, no, I need to make... First, I want to make the full body. So um, let me see. What did I find out? I think I have that in this. I have a derived sketch file. Let me project... Or let me just say 856. 856 is the inner diameter. Um, here we go. Let's hide this. Simon Quincy, another good morning from the UK. Glad you're back and on a new design. Loving the belts. Less is more. Yeah, thank you. I think I, I, I'm, I'm mourning the gears. But but as I said, I'm I'm happy about like finally putting my my mouth where my mouth is. What do you say? My money where my mouth is. <laughs> yes, your mouth where your mouth is. Yeah, uh, because uh, we um, we have said from the beginning that this is going to be a form from function yeah. uh, design. So it took some persuasion. Team Belt were shouting for days here on the streams, and finally we heard them. Right. <laughs> or we didn't hear them because you know what it preys on noise <laughs> no 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 it's better if I do it right Okay. it preys on noise <laughs> <laughs> it makes me think of my machine <laughs> will work oh yeah. truer words have never been spoken so much fun um uh, I'm just going to give this a random value. No, I'm not going to give this a random value. I'm going to give this half. I have to take another measurement on the other pulley I made because I'm going to make um I'm going to make a mirroring pattern to not have to cut this twice. So, let me measure from here to here. I think it was 37. Yes, 37. So, since I want to mirror this, I'm going to extrude this um aha uh -huh, okay uh half of 37 37 divided by 2 boom and now we can perform so here's my first really uh, good trick for fusion 360 
if you have something very repetitive, like 200 gear tooth, we have two rows, we actually have 400 gear tooth we're gonna make right now. Don't make the repetition in a sketch. Just create one tooth and make that into a physical shape and repeat the physical shape. Do not repeat in the sketch because uh, Fusion 360 just hates that. So we're gonna sweep this shape and I already made this sweep path the correct length. Um, so I'm going to choose sweep. Oh no. Wrong button. Wrong button. I'm sorry, everyone. Um, <laughs> Hannes, can you move, can you move the, uh, win the OBS window a little bit to the left? Because I don't see, no, the other way around. A little more. Thank you. Perfect. There we go. A little bit to the left again. <laughs> Thank you. So here's the sweep command, and then I choose uh, my profile here, which is the tooth size, and then I choose a path, and I choose my line. And now it wants to make a cut operation, but we want to make a join operation. So if we look at this straight from the top, you can now see that this little tooth sits at a 75% angle like this. So I'm going to join that. And now we are going to make a circular pattern on that feature we just created. So not on the sketch, but on this little thing. Okay, so this looks bad here. Whenever you see some crazy lines like this, you should try to fix that. So I'm going to edit my sweep feature and I'm just going to sweep. Um, I have to uh, show my sketch. I'm going to sweep everything here. Sometimes when you sweep like a circular plane on top of another circular plane, uh, Fusion don't like that. And you see now this line that was there before is gone. Oh, nice, nice, nice. And now we go up into the menu to our circular pattern. And in the circular pattern, we are going to choose a feature. And in the timeline, we are then going to choose the sweep feature. And now this is where we choose how many gear teeth we want. So we're going to choose around here and we want 200. Um, and then sometimes you have to choose another. I think identical is sometimes this uh, doesn't work and then just try another compute option. Optimize, create identical copies by patterning feature faces fastest, identical, create identical copies by replicating results of original features. Adjust. What is adjust then? Create potentially different copies by patterning. Yeah, so we do not need adjust. I think the adjust is the heaviest compute option. And I usually go with identical, but sometimes I don't know why. So if we're done this correctly, we will get 200 gear teeth when Fusion 360 has stopped thinking. Can I, I just ask you something, Martin? Yeah. Have you done something to your window there? We don't see your timeline, or is that... Uh... Oh, no, that's normal. That's, that's normal. in That's in that. Oh, sorry for that. Oh, there we are, the timeline. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, okay. Perfect. Um, so this did not work. So just like I said, then we try another compute option. So let's go back to features. And I'm I'm a little bit unsure about why things are working. Let me save first. Yes. Save. I would love to understand why, um, why some compute options work sometimes and sometimes not. Uh, quantity 200. Let's try adjust. It looks better. It's calculating. Fusion 360 generally hate ge like gear teeth. It's too many faces. Mm. Um, it doesn't like it. Well, this is a great time to just uh, have some water, right? Cheers, my friend. Or some thinking oil. Oh, I need to refill my thinking oil. Cheers. Cheers to you, audience. Cheers. Uh, this is not coming through. 
looked like it wasn't selected all the way around, Stephen Guy says. No, it's, it's just a feature, so... When you select a feature, you only need to select the feature in the timeline. You don't select it physically on the... So it's... I don't know if you can see this, but... John Jordan, you have some funk going on with the sweep. I would adjust the original sketch. That's a good idea. And it would actually be better if I didn't swept the whole circle, I think. As I think... Okay, now I know how to do this. Maybe we crashed Fusion. Hmm... I was on a roll, and then fusion crashes. That's life. That's life. That's life. We just sit back <laughs> and enjoy the ride. Um, it's prob. Mm. Sometimes it just takes patience because it has to calculate. Like, it has to do the same calculation two hundred times. So if we can, sh it's at seventy-five percent computing right now. Now we get the swimming ball. Yeah, something is happening. Wait, I swept the whole circle at an... I, I, I actually made a mistake. Lucas Olsson, those posters in the background look sick. Are they available to purchase? Well, happy you ask. Let's see. Yeah, he means those behind there. And yes, we sell them on the website. Just go to vintergarten.net and you can find the posters if you like them. There we go. Yeah, I am going to um, known issues. I'm going to start a new list here. Um, I'm going to say... A known issue that I might require help with from Silent Sync is um, a proper CAD design of a 25 tooth um, blue 14M pitch pulley for Silent Sync. And then I want to have the same thing for a 200 tooth. And the cool thing with this design is that we can use. Um, 25 tooth twice and um, 200 tooth uh, twice. So I think, oh, something is, I think I'm going to restart Fusion. Yeah, do so. Yeah. Uh, and we have here, Jesse says, good evening from Tasmania. Just got in from my little workshop building furniture with my hobby CNC. You have been a massive inspiration for me, Martin. Well, glad to hear it, Jesse. So cool. And good evening and a good morning from us here in, from our studio. Sounds cozy to make furniture, like to make things that people actually use in their lives. Um, like I always had a secret dream to become bike repairer, like find like lost bikes and like design them into something cool, like paint them in a very significant color or something. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then everyone would just be like, oh, that's like the bike from from Martin, you know, <laughs> like used bike repairer. That's have been like a cozy dream of mine. Combining parts from different bikes, maybe making them little like Frankenstein bikes. Yeah, I'm restarting Fusion. Yeah. And Santiago Bermudez. Hey, everyone. I finally caught one of these streams. We're so happy to have you here. Glad you managed to see one live. And as Martin said earlier today, we'll try some days to do little later streams so that people uh, from all around the world can tune in. And we just don't stream in the middle of the night for them <laughs> all the time. <laughs> yeah. So we're back in Fusion. Mm. 
I just hear suspect noises from your computer over yeah, there. Um, <laughs> oh yeah, I have to I have to go back to this one and you'll see I'm back. Oh yeah. Rabbit 101. Martin, on a scale of 1 to 5, what would you rate Hannes' mustache? 11. 11, there we go. <laughs> I was fishing for that, didn't I? So I think we had a really good suggestion from from um, chat. It's like, check your sketch. And I think I made a bit of a mistake here. I think I'm going to um, sweep only the tooth por portion and not the entire ring. That was stupid of me. I was too excited. Um, so <coughs> let's edit this sweep feature and let's deselect all the profiles and just select these two. And now when I'm sweeping into the circle, uh, this should be better. Perhaps we should warm fusion up with like using fewer teeth so let's let's try repeat this now Cir I circular think fusion needs some thinking oil <laughs> <laughs> so circular pattern on a feature i'm choosing this little sweep it looks better already how it's now selected a little cleaner um i'm going to select a sketch axis i feel that's better I'm going to select this one. What did we not try? So let's let's just to sh let's just warm up fusion by having 50. Oh, it's already putting 50 really nicely in the preview. 100. It looks much better now. I go straight for 200. Yes. Oof. Okay. 87%. Last time we were only at 75%. Yes. Okay. So thank you, chat, for pushing me in the correct direction. Now we have 200 teeth. But since this is a herringbone pattern, a self-centering timing belt, we're now going to mirror this body. Uh, so I am um, hitting S. This is a super nice thing of Fusion. You have this design shortcuts at the S key. You can choose. So I'm always using that for the mirror command. Boom. And I want to mirror uh, this body. I'm going to mirror this body over its own mirror plane. And, that, and I'm not going to join because we have to uh, shift them half a tooth. Ah. Uh, new body. And look at this. Oh, yeah. That looks nice, right? Oh, yeah. But so far, this does not work. And now I'm going to show you another cool trick. So how can we know exactly how many degrees are half a tooth? It's actually uh, very, very simple. So if we move this new body around its axis, and then we choose... Uh, let me see if I can zoom in on this. So the angle will be um, 360. Wait, how do I do this? Multiplied by 1. This is stupid. Maybe I only need 360. Uh, divided on 200. Put all that. Th no, th 360 divided on 200. I hope I get this right now. <laughs> uh, in a parenthesis. And then multiply that by 0 0.5. That's half a tooth. That's 0 0.5 stands for half a tooth here. Oh, wow. So you didn't see it happening because we were not zoomed in, but check this out. It's shifted by half a tooth now. Cool, huh? So cool. And speaking <laughs> of cool, here's a real cool guy here, John Jordan. I watched all the stream last week, but I really need to get some work done this week, so I will have to see you later. I might just put on the stream on in my workshop. Thanks for the best content on YouTube. Oh, that. Well, John, that warms <laughs> our hearts. 
Thank you, John, and good luck in your in in your workshop with with whatever you're doing. So that really warms our heart. Uh, uh, we can check now if I've really um, shifted exactly half a tooth by measuring the distance from behind this tooth to to here, seven point eight oh five, and then wait, what was I thinking? 7.805 and then I do the same from this point to here 7.805 Woo! we have the same measurement so now we still have two separate bodies which we don't want so now I combine these two bodies boom with boom okay fusion is a little tired because of the gear and there we have it, my friends. Oh my god! A custom-made 200 teeth silent sink pulley. Uh, what else can we say but... It preys on noise. <laughs> 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 oh. Okay, next up, toothbrush, right? <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Um, let's now think... I'm going to imagine that this is going to be on the far right edge of the drum. So let's now make um, a new extrusion. Um, I'm going to use this sketch. So I'm going to give some a couple of millimeters for the belt. Um, so say five millimeters. Five millimeters should really be enough here. I said that ten millimeter, five mill millimeters is not clearance. I, I used two small clearances on the Marmotine X, and I don't want to make that mistake again. I want to use like ten millimeter clearance because everything looks big in CAD. Two millimeter gaps looks like a big door window, so that's what we want to avoid. Okay, and soon you will see the full extent of this plan. Let me just check the outer. Um, so in this sketch, wait, no, yeah, I'm, I'm on the wrong. I'm on the right one. Thank you. 892. I think I have that as a global parameter. Let me check. Grant Calbaugh, It Preys on Noise, should be title of your next song. Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't have it as a global parameter yet, so let's just... And John Jordan, before he heads off to his workshop, just has a quick tip on getting Fusion to be snappier. Put the gear comps in separate files and import them. Now I'm going, haha. <laughs> yes, that's exactly what I'm doing. I'm not putting them in the um, in the main file. Ha Good luck with your work day and thanks for the tip. It's, it's, it's a great one. I'm going to project this and I'm going to project this. Okay. Now we are going to... I have one extrusion operation left and then you will see... Oh no, now the sweep is recomputing. Why? So I have one more extrusion to make and then you will understand exactly where I'm going with this. So this pulley is going to be cut uh, why is this? Okay. Straight into our... I'm having issues here, Hannes 3000. Here we go. Wait, okay. 
I forgot this little area. Oh. On the on this feature. So I have to go and just tell Fusion to remember that little area. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's very choppy now on, on a big gear like this. Okay, now it's selected it. It's blinking because I pressed too many times. <laughs> you know that Easy feeling, right? Does it? Now don't be hasty. <laughs> <laughs> It registers my presses like <laughs> five, ten seconds after I click the mouse. Yes, here we go. There we go. And now I can proceed to doing this, and doing this, and doing this, and doing this. And I want to start from this object. So this gear is going to be machined directly into the musical programming drum. Oof. This is um, music to my ears. <laughs> <laughs> so by doing this, we are like excluding so many parts. And if you use, if you make a machine setup. So this is the this is the lower loop drum. Look at this. Isn't this cool? That's no, that's totally badass. And and like even more. <laughs> it breaks on noise. So that yeah, it's uh, it's fun. Let me now import this design. I made this in a separate design. So let's go to our main assembly. That is closed now since Fusion Crash. I'm going to go and check if there's any more thinking oil outside. Yeah. Do you need a refill, my friend? No, I have. Thank you. You have? Yep. So I'm going to import this design into here. Insert into current design. There we go. And I'm just going to put it anywhere because I'm going to join this in place. And to make this gear line up, so now you can see we have the small pulley with 25 teeth and we have the 200 teeth pulley on the drum itself. And to make these things line up, I'm going to make, um, I think I'm going to make a global parameter that we made in last week because we figured out a nice way to share parameters. So I make all my parameters in a skeleton file here. So add a new one and we're going to name this parameter um, what should it be? Um Fully one distance. And let's just call it 700 for now. And what you have to do is that you have to favorite this parameter in your original file. And this design file is derived straight into um, the master document. So you can see here now that we have to upgrade this and Fusion has this visual crash but it's not really a crash yeah we're gonna live with this sweep bogging us down a little bit I think like if I really want a model I should like not have the gears in the model while working on the design, but I just I just want to try this now. Um, I have to save this file first oh, to yes. make the changes <laughs> propagate through. Um, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. 
So, and then in the parameters in the new design, you have to also favorite them from the derived designs. So now we can access these parameters that is made in a mother design, so to speak, wherever. So this distance right here, 600, instead I can put um, the parameter pulley distance. Yes, so that becomes 700 and Wait, 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 wait. I made it the opposite direction. Oh, oh. So. I hate it when that happens. <laughs> I even like read this in the manual that I have to point the herringbone pattern the same way. Uh, so I'm going to turn this pulley around. Um, because I don't want to redo this one. Oh. I'm just going to read there what Remco the low. Said here, what if there is damage to the teeth? You have to replace the whole thing. Yeah, that's a good point. And also Andreas fill, fills in here. Think of the dragon slaying you did on the previous version. You should really consider making the gear and the drum two parts. Yeah, so the dragon slaying, uh, like this is the... Um, the, the, the um, Since we're not making the same programming wheel at all uh, this time, um, for hopefully there will be no need of dragon slaying um, this time. This one comes pre-slain, this one. <laughs> <laughs> it comes uh, pre-slain <laughs> in the package, yes. <laughs> so I'm going to put... Um, I'm going to make a point for the joint of, of the wheel. And this point is then going to be um, using the same parameter for distance. So to here. Um, I think first of all, if one tooth gets broken on this gear, the belt will not notice it because it will have a uh, hundred and 99 other um, like uh, healthy teeth um, to use. Um, but it's very good to think about like uh, durability and like what like repairability. Yeah. Um, so the less the more you make like one part multitask, the kind of the more you have to trust that part. What I'm doing now is that I'm just doing a um, circle in another sketch plane. And this is going to be um, the circle that I will use for the joint command. So this circle is just um, a, jo a joint fixture that I can drive with the global parameter. So now, before I didn't use joints, but now I'm, this time I'm using joints. Stefan Gea, thanks guys for keeping me company during working hours. Working from home in Corona times tends to be quite lonely sometimes. This is like having a chatting, struggling colleague next to me right now. <laughs> <laughs> love that. We love to be the annoying colleague in the office space. <laughs> and I so much agree with you. I didn't realize like how much I needed to look another person into the eye. Uh, without a screen in between, like as much as I love to be by myself and able to think by myself and stuff, it's been it's been really tough for for a lot of people. Yeah. I can really relate. Um, so what just happened here is that I jointed this drum sideways. So if to just demonstrate what's happening now, um, if I go into um, this file, and if I change the measurement right here from 700 millimeter to 500 millimeter, you will see the whole, and I save this document, you will see the whole drum move 20 centimeters to the left, and also the pulley down here will move uh, at the same time. So let's update the file, and they should move to the left. It's computing the sweep every time. This is a little bit bad news. I don't understand why it has to do that in here. 
Let's see if chat has a brilliant answer to that. They usually sit with brilliant answers. It moved anyway with, with the global parameter, so that's good. So let's head over to um, this pulley and let's... You know what? I don't have to mirror this. I, I just have to revert the joint. I'm not used to using joints. So let's edit this joint. Can I not edit this joint? Uh, edit joint. What happens if I put 180 here? No, that's not what I want to do. Um, how can I flip this joint? I can't, right? Cancel. Hmm. Why not? Let's reinsert this component. Let's go back in the time and let's delete this one. The joint that was referencing. Let's reinsert this component. Let's just turn it 180 degrees like this. And then we joint it the way we want it joined. Let's see if this works. Boom. Let's see here. So now we have the two pulleys lined up and in the same direction. You can see that the kind of the arrow of the pulleys is pointing upwards in the screen. And they are perfectly aligned and I think it looks great. Alexis Burlap, you have a flip button in the joint options. Oh, that was it. Thank you. Let's try that. I know that, but I forgot it. And that's why I love having you here. <laughs> Calling my bullshit out there. <laughs> there was the flip. <laughs> okay, everyone, we're learning again. I oh, pressing the wrong button. So here, here's the flip. That was the one I was looking for. And also we have a Constantine Rab. Maybe if you create the tooth as a separate body and then pattern it. Uh, speaking about bogging down, I think. It, that was exactly how we did it. Okay, that's how we did it. Yeah. Uh, that was exactly how we did it. Uh, I don't understand why it's recalculating the sweep in this document where the drum is imported. But anyway, so. Stag162 says they won't mesh now. Why? Maybe because they're not touching, because it's going to be a timing belt between them. Oh, ah, okay. So maybe you thought it was gears. Maybe that's no gears now. What they mean? <laughs> Dead fish cheese bread comes in here. Gretzky. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. There's always a lot of Gretzkys in our chat here. So, and here's the kicker. Okay, we can use because this is the loop machine, um, which is the below programming wheel. We can use the exact same size of wheel. So the 900 millimeter diameter for, for the top wheel. So um, I'm going to, how should I do this? So do you remember the brass timing clutch thing? Oh, the beautiful thing, yes. I have a better idea for that on this machine. And I think I'm going to do that now. But I think I want them to be separate the signs. So let me just think a little bit here. If we go over to here, I'm going to duplicate this. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Copy. Um, and I'm going to call this, I'm going to rename this uh, 0103 Tooth Silent Sync fully B. It's a bad naming convention, but anyway. And I'm going to import 
this. No, I want to I want to make my I want to make my hinge to join the two first. So let's go here. So this is kind of a master sketch where I will keep uh, where I will keep everything. So now we can make this a relationship to this, which means that this pulley will also move when we change um, the global parameter here. So let's put it, uh, which way are we going to? Let's just put it further, six centimeters away. Boom. Uh, So, once again, I'm just creating um, basically a joint, f um, a spot for a joint in the master sketch. There's a lot of other ways to, to, to do the sideways things. This was just something that I started this morning. And now we can import this thing into here. Oh, this is the wrong number. It should be 03. Rename. 03. 02. I'm going to re rename those later. Insert into current design. And since we have learned something from chat today, relearn something. I can just put this joint here. Boom. And then here. Boom. And then flip. <laughs> Yes. Flip. <laughs> Magically just flew there. It just flew there. Um, is this the same direct? Ah, ah, it has to be. There we have that one. And what's cool, because we want the lower programming drum to go eight times uh, slow, uh, faster than the, than the last programming drum. So we get a whole gear train for free-ish. So... Let's now make the exact same thing with the big drum we just created. I'm going to copy this big drum um, to here because they will be a little bit different. I'm going to rename it. I think we're in 04. I've actually started a PBS. Let's go and have a look. Prog shaft is 04. Fine. 04. It was so funny last Friday, like 103,000 really turned up like a Friday atmosphere. You were so happy. Weren't you? <laughs> I'm, I'm equally as happy today. <laughs> Monday morning. Yeah, no worries. I'm hyped. What was the song you always play on Fridays with Rebecca? Rebecca Black, Friday. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We should play that on every, every day. On every day. Okay. So now I don't have a joint point. Um, I don't have anywhere to put this uh, big drum yet. Um, so I'm going to create that. So let's first of all create a new component, which is 0400 prog assem. I'm going to stop with all the capital letters prog assembly. And then we are going to. Um, use our skeleton because here is the point we're going to use so plane that angle on that little line boom sketch on that little plane mm -hmm. ah. hard to see this And as I talked about last week, when you want to make something straight in CAD, uh, you don't don't draw it straight, constrain it straight. So I want a rectangle now, and I'm just doing this. Not a rectangle pattern, right? No. No. <laughs> no rectangular patterns allowed. <laughs> so now I'm saying that they are all 
perpendicular to each other. Oh, well, that's automatic. And then I'm saying that you are hor ho horizontal. This looks weird. And then I'm saying that this line is coincident with this dot, boom. And this line is coincident with this dot. Then the shaft axis will automatically um, adjust. And then we want to... And now it's a question, should we... Yeah, I guess we should. So I'm just going to project this line that we made because we always want them to be together. So why not have this position for free automatically? So that's the position. Boom. Plane at angle. 90 degrees. Boom. New sketch on that plane. Same as always. Make our little joint. Thingy, also in the wrong place. Here, what's happening now? Something went wrong. I. Oh, I haven't projected the line. Of course. That's why I couldn't. Boom. And now we can go ahead and insert our second big drum. And things are starting to shape up. This is Ooh. not loop drum. This is prog drum. So in the big musical mechanical um, instrument museums, they call always, it's called these big things, they call them drums. So it's a little bit confusing. So they call them like music drums, like programming drums. They don't say wheel, they say drums. Here we go. So now I want to join. So I want to join this drum to the little joining point we just created here. Oof. And now... So what I really like with this is that we can use same gear twice. Yeah and the same uh, stock material. So we can use this HDP uh, 900 millimeter diameter pipes and just have the same stock. So same stock for multiple parts will make it easier for just with supplying and stuff. Yeah. So to illustrate, maybe I should... I'm gonna cut the belts. Mm. So we start to see what's going on here. I'm actually going to open the sketch again to remind people that we have actually mirrored the whole machine. If there's some new viewers... Um, that happened like the first day. We put the bass guitar on the other side standing, which means that I have an ergonomically much better playing position, which means that everything is rotating in the opposite direction to before. And we're dreaming of having a full size vibraphone, mm. which would allow like key changes like... Things like that. And that would be very, very cool. So um, I'm not sure really we can do it. This machine is like one, one and a half. This machine is like two meter wide currently. So we're going to see 
we, we're gonna see about that. Um, and the other context that I love to show is the, um, the rotor resiliency machine, because a lot of things that we will be designing for Marble Machine 3 will be counting on this upgrade to my Avid CNC machine. Avid already sent me an upgrade kit and we have bought this extra gear reduction thing, which is like one to 40 or something. And Alex CNC has uh, designed this movable thing so we can move in height and we can cut 110 centimeters times 110 centimeters with high precision. So if you, if you picture this in mind, and then you picture a 900 millimeter huge water um, uh, HDPE pipe as using a stock material, then you can kind of see how we can manufacture this. And while we have these big drums on the rotor CNC machine anyway, I thought, why not just cut a pulley straight into here? Um, probably we can ask like, um, the engineering uh, like uh, industry to like create a perfect pulley but the belts for this is thousand dollars each yeah and the pulleys will be like ten thousand dollars each and do you know why it's thousand dollars <laughs> perhaps because it preys on noise <laughs> Yeah, it's high maintenance. <laughs> um, let's add some belts so we can see where this is going. Mm, I love this already. Doing so much work these days. It's fun. It's so much fun. I'm, the thirst for revenge is burning in my mouth, Hannes. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Um, I don't like to see all these joints. Never mind. Are they here? Never mind. Where should I put the belts? Um, they go out. They go between. Okay, I'm going to just make a zero five. Zero five. Oh oh. Timing belts assembly. So and now I'm going to make this fully parametric because what I want, so these three points, and let's do a stress test before I make the belt. Let, let's make sure we have the whole model is fully parametric. So if you see this, if you see this look here, if I go in to this sketch, um, I can drag all these points around and everything will follow. Hopefully, yep. so let's re so let's just make something crazy. We say that this one is uh, two two meters away. Oh, that was the wrong one. Um, this one is two meters away, and this one is four meters in the air. And this one is where it is. So I finished this sketch. I save this. I just want to make sure that um, what I think will happen will happen. So let's update the file. Computing the sweep again. I do not understand why it needs to do that. Oh, come on now. Do your voodoo. And it has to do it twice because now we have two drums. It's it's annoying, but but it's um Oof. there we go. There we go. So magic worked. So as you can see now, uh, all my guiding points are behaving correctly. So since these three axles are going to be like a main, main, main design thing. If I if I want more material, I can I can continue and make all these designs very intricate. But as long as I'm full control over these three center points, I will be able to move them around freely during the whole design process. 
So I'm happy to see that that worked. I'm less happy that it takes so much time. Um, so let's go back and revert this. Um, to where we had them. And we are now live in John Jordan's workshop. Cool. He brought us along. Wonderful. John, what are you doing? I'm curious what you're what you're making today. So now we will have the waiting time again. I won't move them around that often. So I guess a certain amount of waiting time for, for, for these upgrades to come through, I think is, is okay. So computing sweep two. There we go. Okay. So let's make the first timing belt. And I'm not going to cut any teeth in the belt. That feels excessive. New component. And Cal. Go and others are wondering why car-like timing belt is not good enough. Why we need that specific belt. But with that tagline, I feel like you really need it. Because, because it preys on noise. <laughs> That's why. <laughs> so straight tooth makes more vibrations. So this belt is, um, if you read the documentation, um, uh, it's it's developed here. Let's see why. <laughs> um, here, straight tooth. Um, where is the noise then? Yeah, the 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 red bar is um, car straight tooth uh, in seven hundred twenty RPM, uh, and the green bar is the decibel levels of the silent sync. Um, so, yeah, that's, I, th I think this is why. Okay, great answer. And John Jordan just updated us that he make, he makes bespoke furniture and he's now working on a folding table slash bench seat. Ah, cool. Whoop, whoop. They even have it in a car here. It's, it's actually a Goodyear belt. So it's, it is actually a car belt as well. Wow, there we go. Best of all worlds. And it also has an energy saving, which is good for my arm muscles. So yeah, um, we'll see, we'll see. It's, it's expensive. Um, like silent sync people reach out if you want to sponsor the Marble <laughs> Machine 3. I need only two belts from you. That's all I'm asking for. Um, and I will provide the most famous application of your product in the history of the world, okay? Ooh! <laughs> Ooh! Um, let's see. Let's see. So now I'm going to create a belt sketch. And I should use a plane that we already had. So I want to use this plane. Let me find that plane. <laughs> In Yuyasha, 720 RPM. Will you ever drive the machine at this speed? The belt is totally overkill. Love it. <laughs> <laughs> it is overkill. I think, I think. <laughs> but it's self-tracking. A straight belt can start to shift off so for example on on this big um on this big uh here we don't have need walls we don't need flanches because this belt cannot go right or left did i just recall that i was dreaming that i tried to pull the belt off sideways and it didn't work i think actually i was dreaming about the belt tonight i just recall <laughs> <laughs> Um, I'm looking for this little plane here because I want to create a sketch on that little plane. Archie, Archie, the, the, the Tory. P 
people doubting the power of Martin's mighty arms. If he wants to get it to 700 or 720 RPM, he will. <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> so yeah, the belt is not 100% set in stone. This is what felt right at the moment, people. Yeah. Like always. I'm going to project this point and I am going to project this point. Maybe I should just make a belt master sketch. Yes. So we don't have to do this twice. Mm, can I do that without messing? Yes, I can do that without messing up. So three center points uh, projected from the skeleton. And I'm going to rename this master sketch belt master sketches. And then we want to look at this. Why do I not see the pulleys? Have I hidden the pulleys? Uh, drive shaft assembly. So here we actually have Martin, what Jordan is working on in his workshop. Oh, cool. There you have them. Beautiful. Look, I'm almost in CAD myself now. I never was able to do uh, a grind on those things when I was skating. Yeah, one of the bucket lists that never happened. <laughs> that Yet? looks great, Jordan. Fun to see. The, un the the legs remind me of like computer aided design uh, like a little like it looked like the reinforcements was like a little bit computer it looked cool looked organic so let me now try to make belt that will be parametric And Fredward here asks, how do you plan to validate slash prototype once the outline is done? And in the future, there's uh, plans for uh, doing physics simulations, right? Yep. From the CAD model. So we're going to do, I'm just going to make this curve concentric with this thing. Boom. Um, just mentioning that. Uh, yeah, we're going to do physics simulations. And we're going to learn that from a Swedish company called Algorix and use their software. We have a dedicated PC standing right here, built by Sebastian Janssen and the team from Linus Tech Tips. And then it's custom built for making physical simulations. That will take us so far. Maybe people from, um, from the community wants to do prototyping. That would be amazing. And... Otherwise, I'm just going to design it correct from the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'm doing a center arc and I'm not putting the center arc on this point because when you choose the point, you never really know if it's concentric. So I'm just putting an arc and it's not concentric at the moment and I'm using the concentric um, constraint to this circle. And then I know it's concentric. And then we're going to have belt tensioners. Um, so, and on which side we're going to put these tensioners will, um, that will be up for discussion later. So this, this right now is a belt tensioner. Let's make it a little bit smaller. I'm just putting it here. It's going to be adjustable. And then I'm doing the same thing again. I'm doing a sketch arc like this at a random point, And then I say, you are concentric with this belt tensioner. Um, and then I'm pulling a line here. And then I'm using the tangential constraint to make this line concent uh, tangential to these arcs. Boom. Boom. Um, and we're going to do the same here.
And I'm gonna cut one of these belt lines and then I'm gonna offset it, the thickness of the belt. Nice, nice. Oof. So what happens now is that now, now I can simulate really nicely the tensioning. Oh, this diameter has to be fixed first. So let's fix this diameter to something. I think I want to see the teeth, so let's just do something random. Uh, wait, 900 divided by 2. Yeah, let's um, him, because I want to calculate belt length later, and I don't know. So let's do this one is 142. What? Ah, divided by two. Radius and diameter. Been there, done oh, that. Oh, yeah. Woohoo! So, and then we have to do the same here. We have to say something here. A hundred. No, hundred times hundred times two. No. What do we have here? 111.5. 111.5 divided in two. Nice. Nice. So now you can see we've constrained everything we want to constrain. And now we can tension the bell. <laughs> That's so cool. That looks cool, right? <laughs> yes. Love it. <laughs> also, the more we tension the belt here, the more interaction we get with a small 25 tooth yeah. gear. So I was nervous about this wide angle and only have a couple of teeth driving the belt. And then people reminded me, yeah, but with, with belt tensioner, you can actually increase. Nice. And this is why belts are more forgiving, because if the distance between the axles are not perfect, um, we can kind of fix that. I see now that we actually have to increase this measurement. Let's do 148. Let's do 150 divided by 2. And now we're going to make the belt thickness. I'm just going to offset this whole line with, say, 4. Um, that's a little thin, maybe. Uh, 6. So now if we did this correctly, you can see that we actually oh, have... Wow. That looks nice, right? Brilliant. So I'm going to keep these lines um, blue for now because that kind of reminds us that this is the tensioning wheel and here we, can, here we can do the tensioning. So let's make a physical belt from this sketch. Nice. Just got a super chat here from Mikey. He says, 50 letters. Jeez, I better think of something good. <laughs> I think you nailed it, Mikey. <laughs> and also we have here from Erik Paulsen. Love seeing you back in action. Hilse fra Norge. And uh, jag ber om ursäkt för min norska. Det är, det är inget jag kan. Min norsk. Sorry. So nice to have you here. And, and thank you so much for the all kinds of, of support. Um... So as we've been saying, like uh, from the beginning of this project, the idea here is to make a CAD model. And if it's promising, we're going to build a machine. If it's not promising, we're going to give up. <laughs> yeah. Uh, belt one. So let's now extrude this. Mm, this is going to look nice. Minus 35 because the belt is 35. And now you can see the nice thing that if we show this sketch here, I can actually manipulate the physical. Oh, wait, something went wrong here. Let's just tell Fusion that this is a construction line, so it never uses that in the extrusion. Um, so now we will be able to kind of live tension this belt. Isn't that cool? You are cool, Martin. Ah, <laughs> yeah, I was fishing for it. <laughs> what has happened with our alignment? Oh, I, I pulled the belt to the wrong gear. Perfect. 
well. <laughs> <laughs> so this belt is of course going to the bottom gear. So that's so much for being cool. So, but look how, how fast we can fix this. Let's skip this constraint. And now I'm saying that you are coincident with you. And I thought that would be enough. It's tangential the, way, the wrong way around. <laughs> and here we have, since there is a little bit of delay for, this, for the chat here, Thomas Whitelaw, isn't that belt meant to go to the loop drum below? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Skating where the puck is going. These Gretzky. Gretzkys. These Gretzkys. So I moved it. I fixed my mess a little kind of without a lot of pain, I think. So now you can see that the belt is lining up. And actually it's not centered because the belt is only 35. Here's a nice trick for you with the extrude command. The extrude command can do a lot of stuff. And one of the things that I missed in the whole beginning of my career is the offset. So let me explain exactly what I'm going to rant about right now. If we look in really close here, you can see that the teeth are sticking out on the left side right here and we see nothing on the right side. I want to move this belt one millimeter to the left on the screen. So what I do, um, instead of moving my sketch uh, over, because I want it on that plane, I'm using um, offset. So I put an offset in, and I put a one millimeter, and when that goes through, that should have been enough. Oh, it offset it the wrong way. Edit feature, offset minus one millimeter. Minus one. Now, if we look at it from the front, you can see we have Ooh. gear teeth sticking out on both sides and the belt is perfectly centered. That's what we like to see. So instead, like in the beginning, I thought I had always had to put a sketch where I want the physical body to start. And this is super helpful. So you can make like a master sketch in the middle of your design and extrude things wherever you want them to be. Um, it's it's very helpful. If only life was that easy, right? <laughs> <laughs> you know, the crazy thing about that is that life is easier when you only think about one thing, for example, a marble machine. I think I was thinking about the t-shirt with Wilson and like enjoying the journey. I think now more than ever, I realized that I'm just at my happiest when I'm like trying to solve a problem. So even if this machine will never work, I got a lot of happiness from trying, yeah. trying to make it work. Borealis visuals. Extrude offset was my favorite discovery. Complex parts from just one sketch. Yeah. I want to marry that button. <laughs> <laughs> I, what was the name of the... Borealis visuals. Borealis. Um, we're just going to like zoom in for you a little bit extra here on the offset. <laughs> So, like that. <laughs> a function so good, worthy of marriage. I, I, know, I know exactly the feeling, especially because, like me, it, I, two years I made workarounds without even looking at the menus. That's kind of another, like, fusion. Like, in these boxes, look at every field. That's something I learned from, like, Marius and Alex. They looked at every field and they read all the options. That's like the, just, just click on this little arrow and think about what all these alternatives are doing. That's like a super good idea. Okay, second belt. Um, I want to marry that option. <laughs> <laughs> well, I will. I won't judge. We're all for it. So now we're going to make the exact same thing down here. Uh, No, what am I doing? We have to start with a center point arc. So we're gonna force to be coincident with. Hmm. Like that. And then we're gonna make another one. 
up here. And now will be an even more clear example of of um, of offset extrusion because this sketch plane is far from where where we want it. I'm making the curve for the timing. Um, sorry, what, what what am I saying? The tensioning thing. I'm just making everything tangential. Boom, boom, boom. And we can already offset this, actually. Um, what did I do? Six. Yep. Minus six, I think, here. Um, so, and then I know the drum is the same size. So I'm just checking out the letter here, D39. So when I'm putting this constraint, I'm not putting a value. I'm just writing D49. 45? 39. 39. There we go. And same here. D41. So having having like the same gear uh, several times um, is already like making things easier. Uh, D38. D38. And then... You are concentric with you. Huh? Oh yeah, it's the it's this one. D40. And I put D40 here. We should be good to go. Yes. And we are. So we can also later like take the belt away from if we run out of space, we can kind of take the belts away from from the thing. Um, oh, this is going to be nice. Um, so if we now see where we want this belt. Um, so we know that this gear will always be there. Hmm, how should I think, by the way? So when I'm now... Let's let's do it like this. Um, new component. Zero five oh two belt two. So now we're gonna see why people some people want to marry the extrude command. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm choosing my profile. Oh I have to oh this is a little annoying. Never mind. To select several ones. So I know the distance is going to be 35 millimeters, but I want to start to be this profile plane because I want the beer to be in relationship to this pulley. But we then want to have no, sorry. We want to have and how should I do this? <clears throat> Mitchell Hatzelhoff. Make sure you have a plan to get the belts off when they need replacing. Yeah, so that's why it's good to have a belt uh, belt tensioner, because if we loosen this, um we can just pull them off. Mm. Um and as industrial as these belts are, um, mm, okay, I'm gonna do this little hack, hacky, hacky style. I can't figure out uh, a cool way to do this right now. No, so never mind. Twenty. So that's the correct measurement. Why, why can't we, hmm. Okay, I'm gonna do this now. This is not perfect. 
and Johnny Crash here just stopped by to say it's amazing to see how much progress seems to happening in only four days. <laughs> I think I shall stay if I have the time. Thank oh. you so much, Johnny. Wonderful. We. I hope to prove to be a thousand times, hundred, ten times more efficient <laughs> <laughs> uh, this time around um, compared to what we had before. Look at this. Um, but you know, I gave up too early. The belt positioning, this belt position is parametric. Um, oh wait, this belt position is actually is actually also parametric, so I'll I'll get away with it. And what's cool now, when we design, we can we can still just move these, and we can tension the belts. Oh. Not beyond the boundaries, but a little bit. So, next step is I want to go into the documentation of... Um, yes. um, so, I'm going to go to the website of Silencing. Do it. Do it. Documentation. Here we go. <laughs> And I'm going to see the standard available belt length. Um, so... Um, so... If we go into... I'm using the blue belts. And here's the standard length. And this is where I found the price. And I always need... I hope that we can find like this 3,500. So let's look, just look at what this one is costing. $848 for one. <laughs> what is that about? Um, so now let's see, this is 3,500. Let's now make a crude measurement of our, um, of our belt. So how we can do that is to measure our inside line. So this is something I, I'm not sure about. Oh, here. Outside length. Thank you. They they specified right here that it's the outside length. Um, so let's do that. Let's do it. Cheers. I always miss you. Miss your cheers. Cheers. Cheers, audience. Hannes 3000 and the audience. Um... <sighs> I don't have a better way to measure. I don't know. Oh, maybe someone knows in Fusion if you have kind of a um, really nice way to add. Because if I hit E, uh, E, I'm talking Swedish, um, I can see each sketch line, the length of each sketch line, but I can't add them, or can I? Have I added them? Wait. And I automatically... So this one is 919. And I... No. I have to kind of add a... I have to calculate them. You want to take a calculator 3000? <laughs> Does it need to be calculator 3000? <laughs> so, 919... Hey, I'm not that fast. Here we go. Yep. N 919 yeah plus yeah 120 um 155 155 yeah plus yeah uh, sorry 504 504 plus yeah 33 33 plus 257 plus 257 plus 1,936. 1,936. And where did I start? Did I start with one? Which one did I start with? I'm sorry. I Nine, don't know. 919. Yeah, so what's the result now? Uh, 3,804. Ouch. 3,804. But that's a pretty fantastic result because that means we can just buy the longest belt. Because check this out. What, what did you say? 3,804. 
oh no, that's not a good result. <laughs> so we're just between this 3,500 and 3,920. What, what did you say? 3,000? 3,804. 3,804. You can make them custom length, but I w- would be so happy if we could take like a part number. Imagine just having like, this is the belt. Yeah. 3,804. 3,920. So if we tension the belt a little bit more, we should be able to get to 3,920. Okay, can can you make a new calculation? I'm gonna calculate everything that doesn't change, and then we can only calculate what's changing. Yep. Um, by the way, I have to check the thickness actually. Um, I had that. That's on this screen. Didn't I see the thickness here somewhere? Look at this. En starkare och remmer lägre ljudnivå. You love that. Fantastic. I think somewhere here I saw the belt thickness. Here it looks like it's made from like felt or something. <laughs> Polyutherin. Oh, is this how they are splicing it? Wow, look at that. That's the splice down there. You see it? Oof. So when you make custom lengths, this is how they weld it together. Wow, cool. Actually, the treadmill on the gym is spliced in, with the same pattern oh. I saw this morning. Mike, it says inspect tool works to find the length. Is that in Infusion? Oh, thank you. I think I... Let me find this first. There. Type 14, this is the one we have, the one on the right. 8.64. And they say outside length. Well, this is... Wait. 8.64. Okay, then I know then I know what to do. And I'm going to remember to try the inspect tool. Um... What did I say? 8.64? 8.64. So... I want to remove the constraint of that one. I want to find a sketch with the out thing of the gear without projecting the gear can I do that okay I'm gonna do something a little cheeky um, Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. um just for now I'm going to project I know this measurement. Okay. So this is the moment where I should have a um, parameter. No, 8.64 from the bottom. So I'm going to project this without making a link. And then I'm going to lock this little line. Boom. And then I'm going to say that the outside of the belt I'm going to offset this with 8.64. And then I'm going to say that you are coincident with you. That did not work. Hmm. Why am I having issues with this? I can say that I can say that you are. This is just to make a cal- a little bit of a calculation. 
8.64. Yeah, no, 6 here because mm -hmm. of the... There we go. If I, if I just do this now... Okay, that that's okay for now. So, then we get that measurement right. And then I have to do the same here. I should do this a little bit faster this time. Fix. Offset 8.64. And then I'm removing this and I say that you, oh, that's so stupid. So I'm basically just want a little bit of a better guess. Six, there we go. This is going to make our guess. Pretty okay. Whole thing turned blue now. Why did it turn blue? We want black. Yeah. Um. Oh yeah, I actually did this before I did this, and I just did this. Okay, that's fine. Okay, do you have the calculator? If I have. <laughs> Woo! So didn't you the inspector tool then? How did how does that work? Yeah, here's measure. Good, thank you. Let's try it. So inspect measure. That that's the thing I already used. And Grant Kolbo Aruvar Au Vidosin Ayu Ohoembro. Have a great day. Same to you. Same to you, Grant. Take care. Um, so I only know about measure and I can't add, I can't get an added value in there. Let's do it manual then. I got the calculator yeah. ready. So now we know that we should measure the outside edge. Mm -hmm. So we're getting closer. 182. 182. 183 actually. Oh no. 183. Plus. Plus. 922. 922. Plus, yeah, uh, hundred eight, one thousand eight hundred ninety-eight. and then we want the sum of that. The sum of that is three thousand and three. Um, three thousand three. Jake Russell is saying the measurement is not considering tooth engagement. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it is because we took the measurement. Wait, 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 wait. I choose the wrong curve. Um, Blair Spurt Burglar, you confuse the thickness with the depth of the teeth. Yeah, I uh, no, I didn't. Nope. But what I did is that I projected the top of the tooth down here when I should have projected the bottom of the valley between the tooth. So let's remove this line. Uh, so almost, almost right. I'll take it. Um. Oh, it's hard to see. This is the line, so. Diameter, I'm going to copy this value, 100.10. So this is going to be 100.10. Um, divided by 2. Then it should go there, but that's not what we want because we Oh 
Oh, we can do that also. What was the other value? Value 8.264? 8.64, wasn't that the standard one? 8.64. Yeah. 8 plus 2.64 plus 2.64. It's very roundabout right now, but this should be this should be this should be it. That looks better. But the cool thing is that we're we're only only trying to find out if this standard belt can work and the tensioner will take care of any mis miscalculations. So let's start from the beginning again, Hannes, with the with calculation. The, with the calculation. Oh yes. Um so thanks for being eagle eyed in the in the chat. 178. 178. Plus 921. 921. 922, actually. Can you plus one? Let's do it from the beginning. You messed it up for me here. Yeah, I messed up. Yeah, 700. 178. 178. Plus. Plus. 922. 922. Plus. Plus. 1,899. 1,899 equals 2,999. <laughs> yeah, 4 millimeters. Yeah. Two nine, 4 millimeters difference. 2,999. And uh, the value we're going for in the end was 3,800. What did it say in the, in the documentation? No, oh, that's on the website. Um... 3920 is what we want in the end. So basically we want our tension part to be 920. There we go. Freddy Kantusch. Hannes, there is a German webshop called Zarimen 24. <laughs> Look at my German here, right? Nice. Which sells this exact type of belt for way cheaper. Oh, interesting. Please put it in the document. Wait, how, how, what, what's the price there? I don't know. Freddy, can you paste it into the document? The do link to the document is pinned in the chat and also in the description, I think, of the video. And also check for exactly this part number, B3920. That's the exact belt we're, we're looking at. Oh, it's actually the length of the belt. I'm stupid. 3920. <laughs> B stands for there blue. There we go. So B stands for blue and 3920 is the length. Okay, there. Here we go. Um, so now, Hannes, let's measure this. A Two new measurement. 275. 275. Plus. Plus. 58. 58 plus mm -hmm. 490. 490 equals 823. So we were at 823, which means that we have to tension more. Hmm. Let's see if that actually makes sense. Well, we can wrap this belt around more. That looks pretty cool though, doesn't it? Looks uh, super fine. I, I don't really like this like angle here. Maybe we can make this, maybe this tensioning wheel can be larger. Um, okay, one, let's measure this, two, four, three, wait, two, oh, three, two, four, three, two, four, three, wait, two, four, three, 86, 86, and 506, 506. There we have 835. Yeah, it's go it's getting a little bit in between here. It's not good. We're not adding a lot of length. We're missing what are we missing? 10 centimeters? 
Huh. Okay. So maybe a custom belt then. I guess it's going to be more expensive, but... Um... Oh, maybe just move the drum further up. Boom, problem solved. <laughs> yeah! Actually, so now, now I might talk about parametric design. Let's see if we have done our homework. Check this. We, we're missing kind of 10 centimeters. Let's add five here. Um, boom. Boom, boom. Five centimeters up. And the belt, everything should now be parametric in here. Let's upgrade this. Woo, 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 woo. Voodoo. It's computing the sweeps outside of the screen. It's, it's hidden behind uh, me and Hannes. I mean, me. I'm faster with calculating than this. <laughs> I got you beat, Fusion. <laughs> now it should jump up a little, little bit. Wait for it. There Woo! we go. Did you see the belt stretching? Oh. 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 Things like that. I could marry that function. <laughs> um, okay, let's do, do this one more time. There's probably a simpler way of doing this anyway. 197. Yeah. Are you talking to me? Yes. Oh, wow. Here we go. What did you say? 197. 197. Plus, plus um, 976. 976. Plus. Plus. 975. 975. Plus. Plus. 841. 81. Plus. Plus. 243. 243. That equals 3,973. There we go, my friends. We are above the belt length. So Yahoo! If you see here, we're aiming for 3,920. We're now at 3,970, which means I can release the, the tensioner a little bit, which makes me happy. And we have found out that we can use a standard belt. Let's move over to the other belt. Maybe we can use the, maybe we can use the 3,500 belt here. Mm -hmm. Of course, I don't know this distance yet. So let's calculate the other belt. Kevin Stone, check out the point along path feature for measuring curves. Set start value to zero. It should it should give you the total. Oh mm -hmm. mm -hmm. point point along path. What do you mean point along like do you mean pattern along path? I don't know. Check out the point along path feature. What what is that? <laughs> but you're like if we select this this path here, point along path. Maybe in is that in sketch mode? This would be super nice to not have to go through this. Point along path. I know pattern along path. Um, just double click the line. What does that mean then? I'm just going to do a quick Google here. Okay. Um, um, point. Make people look at our beautiful faces. Along here path Fusion 360. We should show the action cam. No. We never show the action point cam. along path in the construction drop down menu. Elliot says. In the construction drop down. Construct point along path. Kevin Stone. Okay, hang on. I'm back. Are you back? Yes. Yes, you're back. Here we go. Construct. Point along path. Grrr. I was going to scream Gretzky's. Information. Yeah. 
Yeah, I, I don't see the... So this distance is only a um, percentage distance as far as I... Oh! No, wait, 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 wait. Okay, these Gretzkis. These Gretzkis, you know? These Gretzkis are... Fi I love you guys. <laughs> <laughs> I love you Gretzkis out there. So fun. So if I change to physical... Um, but I move this, so let's redo this. I've never seen point along path. This will save a lot of... It's funny because when it's too boring to watch our streams, the Gretzkis find faster ways for us to solve the problem. <laughs> um, 3, 7... Why did we get a completely different number, though? Because now... L let me check, let me check this thing. Um, I'm gonna make a one meter long line. And then I'm gonna do point along path on this. Construct. Oh, look. Change distance type. Yeah, I, I, yeah, that's what I found physical. But it's... So my line is one meter long. But you set the point in the middle. You need to set it at the start, right? You set it at zero. Okay, so if I, I have to sweep Blair it. Spurt Burglar, make sure it's set to 1.0 in the percentage first. Oh, Gretzkis. Gretzkis. Construct. Point along path. Thank you so much for like being here and 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 finding these cool things out. Distance. So I'm pulling this to to the starting point. That's the line that I clicked on. Now now I'm with you. And now we should get a value closer when we change. Look at this. 3948. What did we have? Um 397. Yeah, that's that that's what we and I changed the 3948. Yes, it works. Thank ooh, you so ooh, much. Ooh, we learned something today. <laughs> <laughs> I learned something today. Today we actually learned how to look up the length of the belt in Fusion. We don't need to rely on Hannes 3000 and his calculator skills anymore. We can just use a program that's actually designed for this stuff. Ain't the world beautiful? You know what's more beautiful? <laughs> It preys on noise. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's get back to business. Let's see if we can buy a shorter belt for the other connection. So now we want to measure. You can please remove that image now. It served its purpose. <laughs> <laughs> now we are going to use point along path. Click this. And we're going to start with making sure that we start measuring at 1.0 now we get oh this is all and we have 3346 that means currently let me head over to um, 3346 uh, 3346 uh, second belt which is actually the first belt if we then go over to the website I think we can actually um, find out that we can use this. Boom. B3500. Haha. <laughs> okay. That was uh, joyful to learn that command. So thank you so much, chat, for being awesome. Um, I'm going to put a part number in here. Because that makes me feel like an engineer. <laughs> um, do I have a better zoom in? I have the... I have this that's not a good one. Menu. I have the menu. Oof. 
that might work. It doesn't really work. I can do this though. Yay! Oh, it's not good. I don't want to. <laughs> you don't have to, Martin. Okay, thank you. Um, belt one is called B dash three five O O silent sync, which is cool because if someone orders that, it's the correct belt. And belt two is the B. 3920. I was nervous yesterday that I had to use a custom length belt. And it looks like we have actually figured it out. Oof. Okay. Are you ready to get your mind totally blown, Hannes 3000? That's all I'm here for. <laughs> so, these two drums, I have to give some context. Um, where's our blocking? The lower drum. Um, I'm going to hide the funnel. Just. Okay, for now, <laughs> for now. The lower drum is um, going to play these drum beaters. And it will be able to play rolls and everything and ghost notes. It will be able to play on the snare drum. I love those. Like that. Mm. Okay. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Um, and it needs to play in sync with this one on top of here. So on the Marble Machine X, um, we had a little timing clutch that was supposed to very fine tune the physical relations between these two uh, drums. And thanks to this new gear train, I have figured out a much nicer way of, of, of implementing that adjustability. So I'm going to go into, I'm going to show you right now, loop shaft assembly, uh, new component. No. New component. Zero three zero two timing adjust. I have to revisit these names later. So imagine that this pulley here is not um, keyed to this shaft. Instead, it is keyed to the thing that I'm going to CAD right now. Martin. I hate to do this to you, but you know what time it is, right? Oh, no. It's actually time for a lunch break now. <laughs> okay. And all you people in chat that I'm watching right now, today we're going to do things differently. We're going to leave this stream up so you don't have to find a new one after we're back from our break. So just leave this stream up and we will get some energy and we'll be right back with awesome new stuff for you to look at the newly improved timing adjust right after lunch thank you so much for helping out with that awesome uh, point uh, long path thing let's go and get some uh, food and then we continue with the soul food in one hour yeah 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 we'll be right back so leave this up and we will be back take care everyone so long
there we are, everyone. Back from lunch. Energy is refilled. Happiness is rising. Happiness is pouring out from every pore from our bodies. Look at Martin. So focused. Can't keep a straight face. <coughs> but he's already at it. He's already at it. Cad is exploding with all his exciting ideas. Welcome back, everybody. So nice to be with you. And we are going to hopefully get our minds blown because we are going to make a part that we had on the original machine. I do have the original machine right here. So a crucial thing to make the timing between the time Hyatt machine on the original machine and the programming wheel was this timing clutch. So if I isolate it here, you can see it. I isolate it. It was here. Machine by Machine Thinking, mm. the wonderful YouTube channel, was this little brass instrument right here. And it served its purpose really, really nice. It worked perfectly. It was sometimes tricky to adjust to, to stick your hand into the middle of everything. And it was kind of small. You can see it's very hidden in there. And I, the other night when I was going to sleep, I got this um, idea for how to make the same functionality on these uh, drums that we've been working on. And when I say drums, I mean musical drums. Uh, so let me head over to, I have so many designs open. Let's see if there's here we're working. Yes. So check this out. I've cut four M8 holes in this bully right here. Sorry for dancing around so much. So um, this is, these are M8 bolts and I also removed the key. So this pulley will be able to circulate, rotate <laughs> freely on the shaft. If we compare it to this pulley, it actually has uh, it has actually has a keyway. So this will be uh, rotating with the shaft. But since we want to offset this position towards this position very accurately, and we want to change it between songs. Um, I thought of a very, very much simpler way to do that. So let's start to CAD the, uh, what do I call it? Timing adjust. So I'm going to create a sketch. Hmm. I actually never want to create a sketch on that body. So let me first create a sketch plane and I want to do that on the loop shaft master sketch, which we have here. So let's just assign a random location for this. Uh, 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 uh. Do, 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 do. I'll do it random now and I'll constrain it more seriously later. And we are going to make yet again a sketch plane, which uh, position is driven by, by that sketch line we, we, we just made. And now we can create a sketch on that plane that we just created. Where did you go? And now, okay, now I'm going to project uh, this pulley and I'm going to leave this link on. And as you can see here, we now get the, we get the same holes. So I think this should be kind of like an aluminum part or um, like when I started to design this third machine, I was like thinking uh, it's going to be all plywood <laughs> to get back to the roots. And um, like 
just to remember this the first machine had much more plywood and then the second machine as you can see mm. but what what is our design northern star form from function mm. so if there's a material that is better than plywood in doing this job i'm gonna choose it and the looks will be derived from that so now i want to have let's hide everything else so this outside line is the inner diameter of the drum. So let's go here. Let's do this as simple as possible. These two lines should be parallel and tangential. Boom to boom, boom to boom. There we go. Let's just set a random angle. So I'm giving a reference line and then I'm saying that you are 35 degrees. And yeah, I want to use, I want to use a lock pin. So let me show you what I mean. Uh, da -da 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 -da. I'm gonna cut a hole here and machine a little slot. You will soon see where I'm going with this. So I'm gonna machine a little slot in this. Maybe this is aluminium that's maybe a little expensive. It could be plywood as well, but I think there will be some forces on this part. So I think I would prefer aluminium. I already made a mistake in cutting this. I should have just, because I want this part to be symmetrical. So I should have just like cutted half of the part, but let's, let's accept the situation. 16 millimeters there, 16 millimeters here. And can I offset this? Offset minus 20, boom. And then I'm going to say that you are tangential to you. And this hole is, let's say, uh, 10 millimeters, Ooh, 20. Okay, so this is actually almost everything to do on this part, but let's extrude this part now. So, so let's say we make a um, classic like uh, aluminium stock, 15 millimeters. I think 15 will be plenty. So let's extrude this, uh, 15 millimeters. And there we have uh, the aluminium part. And then where's our drum? Okay, let's unisolate this. So as you can see, this can rotate freely inside um, the loop drum, like that. And now we are, it's not lining up right now because I want it to be on that pulley. Uh, let me hide this drum. So, I think I have to extend the pulley a little bit. Let me just see. I'm going to connect these two. Let me choose another color for this aluminium thing. Let's do it. Yes. Yes. So we can separate them. Let me just check the distance from here to here. We're missing 23 millimeters. So I'm going to give... 33 extra now. 28, I'm gonna give five extra. So let's head over to this pulley and expand that a little bit. It's in this design. I think it's this. 23 plus 28. 
Did I say 28? Okay. This looks a little bit stupid right now. We can. It looks a little bit too long, but for stiffness, this is maybe a stupid idea to have it so long. Maybe I should have put this on the out. Oh, anyway, let's have a look. So when I update here, you will see that bully uh, expand to the left. There we go. Woohoo! <laughs> Gets me every time. Yeah, bringing the pep. Yes. 3000 had a pep upgrade. Yep, 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 yep. Or maybe it's just the better designs that get him going. <laughs> I will not tell. <laughs> but here is something to cheer you up. I actually saw something on Discord here, some nice little from the fan art section here that Jojo 2 had been doing here. Look at that cute little Lego figure right there. Oh, that's wonderful. The hair is in the correct direction. Yeah, you know, right? <laughs> <laughs> and also from today, Andreas Eld has his own uh, Lego marble machine. I just want to play this and see what happens with this. Whoa. Let's see if there's sound also. Whoa. Wow. Wow. Oh, wow. That thing works a thousand times better than the Marble Machine X. <laughs> Congrats on that. Wow, yeah. great. Wonderful. Thank to you. See. That's really cool. 74 millimeters. So let's head into that's super cool. Let's head into this here. 370 plus 54. No, 74, I said. Sorry. Plus 74. And now these parts should meet. They are meeting. So here you can see how this aluminium part is um, attaching to this pulley. And then we're going to cut holes. So I'm going to start with... Maybe I can cut the holes at the same time. Um, okay, I'm going to cut the holes in the drums first. Or maybe not. Maybe I should cut. Okay, let's 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 make this very simply. This surface is curved. How do I how do I do that easiest? Um Uh, a plane on this. How do I create that sketch plane the simplest? I'm going to give myself a line. Oh yeah, in the sketch. So one thing that I love to do and that I uh, urge everyone to do is to try to not use body to project sketches on direct on top of bodies but always use sketch planes and, and sketch lines. So this is a good example. I want to drill a hole from the outside of the circle. So what I do is that I, I just add a straight line here because you don't you can't adjust it to like a, a curve. I just make this a construction line. And then this line I'm going to use for my favorite command, plane at angle. And there we have our new beautiful yellow sketch plane. And on this sketch plane, I make my sketch. And then I can project this whole thing. I can find its center with only one diagonal line. And I can drill one hole in the middle. It starts with only one hole. So, um, can you search for uh, locking pins? Locking pins? Yes. Oh, it will be my pleasure. Uh, seven. No, oh, the, the diameter doesn't matter. Or you can search for um, eight millimeter locking pins. So I'm drilling a 
hole through this section here. Sorry for jumping around. This part is at an angle. And we're going to go two sides. I want to drill down into this open window we created. I have to recenter the image. Sorry for the moving around. Here you can see kind of what we're doing. We're drilling that hole in this piece. Boom. So what are we looking for? What kind of locking pin here? Um, it's called, it has um, like an activator. Oh, that's That also works, uh, locking pin. Um, it should have a little button. A quick, rele quick release locking pin might be the name. Quick release locking pin. Yeah, try that. Chat will find. Quick release locking pin. So let me remind myself what angle I put this in. So now we have to drill the corresponding hole in the musical drum. And I think and here you start to see where I'm going with this. <laughs> Bless you, Hannes 3000. Thank you. Um, loop drum. Oh. I need to know the distance from here to the center of my aluminium part. I should be able to find that if I activate this sketch and click that point. 48.5. Okay. Are we seeing something we like over here, perhaps? Can you remember 48.5? 48.5. Yeah, there are locking pins with a little button in the top. 48.5. 48.5. Loop drum. How can I do this? Uh, I have to look at it from the same location. So I'm going to create a plane on this surface here, a tangent plane. I'm not seeing it here. And I think I angled the piece 30 degrees, so then the first hole... This looks like engineering, doesn't it, Hannes? Totes. Totes, <laughs> totes engineering. Totes. <laughs> so let's start with 30 degrees. That should give us a good starting hole. And then we're going to create a sketch here. And now we're going to remember that magical number we, we said. The 48.5? Thank you. That, that's the one. So I'm going to project this line. Thank you, chat. Ball lock pin. Ball lock pin. That sounds that sounds good. And I'm gonna put this hole here at the magic number forty-eight point five. There we go. And we're going to make this eight. And then we're gonna drill this. And this is so cool since we're gonna. I keep on cho showing just for everyone to see that we are doing design for manufacturing here. This is the rotary CNC machine solution that we will use um, to create a lot of the custom parts. I want to completely not use custom parts on this machine, but there's no one else building marble machines at this site. There's no industry standards. Uh, so we have to do some custom parts. And for all the custom parts, we're going to use this machine. So when I drill, uh, these holes right now, you can imagine how easy it's going to be for this rotary CNC machine to 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 make this machining operation. Um, 
drivetrain assembly. No, I'm that's not the one. I want the loop loop drum. This is where we are. So this hole is in the correct position. So we're drilling that. The rotary CNC machine is drilling this uh, straight through. This design is sluggish because of all the gear tooth, gear teeth. Gear teeth. And um, are we getting somewhere with these? Kind yes, of yes, yes, yes. Those are the ones I mean, like the you red, mean, the red one down ones? there. Yeah, those are beautiful. What do you want me to find out? No, I just want... To, you just wanted to look at them. So, if we can find like 8 millimeter, and then the depth should be... Um, then I'm curious about the depth from the stop down to the little ball. Uh, so if we can find like... Um, probably there are different sizes, but I, I would like to know the length from the red part down to the little ball that is holding it. You know what to do, chat. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just wanted to show people what I meant with the yeah. locking pins. Okay, so this there's this ball lock pins we're looking for. And now we're going to take this cut feature that we just made, this little hole right here, and we're going to uh, make a circular um, pattern. And we're going to use this axis. Thank you, by the way, to Malte Tekentrop. Who said what I should look for? The ballock pin. Thank you, Malta. Uh, and here we can choose how many steps we want around the perimeter, how many settings. And what's cool is that it's geared down towards the real drum, so we can actually, it's geared down by eight. So let's just, let's just try 200. Should be easier than the teeth. And this is also a precursor how we're going to cut the programming holes themselves. We're going to drill them. No milling, just drilling. And drilling on a CNC machine is very repeatable and simple because we're going to have round programming pins. We had rectangular programming pins on the previous machine, which created a lot of, a lot of issues. And please, Fusion, do not crash on me now. I think Fusion died. No. 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 Let's do this then, in the meantime. <laughs> Can we see the ball locking pins instead? Uh, I'm searching for a specific one here. Uh, okay. Försinkad spärrbult. Oh. Med stift. Swedish one. Yeah. Okay, pause music from, yeah. from Fusion 360. living something like this my friend fusion didn't crash yeah that's the one. Oh, that's a cooler one because it doesn't um it doesn't have the ball it has a cooler uh, more oh there we have it great so um, this that's was from Jonas Lindblad, by the way. Awesome, Thank Jonas Lindblad. Much. That's exactly Sparrbult. So the D one, yeah, you you could. So imagine, cool. When you want to switch tempo, you just click the thing, you take it out, you switch over, and now we can go back to CAD because uh, this this totally worked. And here you can see like how nice we can machine. Like drill these 200 holes perfectly accurate on this CNC machine will be possible. So the Dragon Slayer episode when I try to sync four plates, no, no more of that. Um, so if I now, I'm so curious to see if my hole is now lining up with my aluminium part. Um, so right here, if we're lucky when I when I upgrade this drum here, we should have a hole. If I thought in the right direction. Linus, Look at that. Linus T. 
the ball lock pin can be found in 8 mm diameter and the length that Martin wanted to know can vary between 20 mm to 45 mm with 5 mm increments. Oh, fantastic. Hang on, I'm going to note that information down. Fantastic information, thank you so much. Um, supplier here. Um, ball lock pin, 8 mm. Can you repeat the, the, the distances? Uh, 8 mm diameter. And the length that Martin wanted to know can carry vary between 20 mm mm. to 45 mm with 5 mm increments. To 45? Yep. That's exactly that's exactly what we need. Then we can just machine the aluminium part to have a nice have a nice fit. And remember just uh, that document there, Martin. Can yeah. I can I reach it? Um or it's it's yours. Yeah, that's only mine. You okay. want to reach it? Oh, I write down försinkad spärrbult. Försinkad spärrbult. GN 114.2. Oh, a DIN number. Ja, 114.2. Wonderful. There we have it. Wonderful. Um, like, later on in this process, when the machine, like, if people want to help, like with the supplying and stuff like that, that's going to be so much fun. And I'm I'm having ideas uh, on how to give out like a proof to everyone that has been helping. Uh, there is some call, something called the um, uh, proof of at attendance protocol, which is free to use both for me and for you. And then we could give out uh, digital proofs for everyone that has been helping with no value in the beginning, but that would be like a little... Like maybe a little um, image of Wilson or something uh, that's free for you and free for me, uh, which which will just be like, oh, I helped with this process. So that's on my mind for the future of this project. But bef mm. but first, we need a great design. <coughs> mm. So here you can see, maybe I should actually import. No, I'm gonna I'm gonna explain the feature first. So let's hide all the sketches. Um, so imagine that we have this locking pin, um, where is my thing then? Why is it not lining up? It was lining up. Oh, it is lining up. I'm, I just don't see it. So imagine we have a pin in here. I don't know how many pins we need, but because of leverage, I don't think we need more than maybe one or two. Um, then this pulley will be locked in its position. And if we want to change the, the relationship between these two drums, we can easily access this pin, pull it out from the other side and just push this thing over to the next hole, insert a pin again, and we have a very accurate measurement. So. Let's check how fine granularity we need. Um, we can also have several holes in the aluminum thing to increase the granularity. So center to center, I can't get that. Um, that's a shame, why can't? Because they're not on the same plane. So this would move... Hmm... Let me just head back into how do I do to get that measurement? Oh, but I know they're eight millimeters, so I can calculate it myself. Six millimeters from edge to edge. Okay, ten. These holes are ten millimeter distance, which would one step here would move the surface of this drum. Um 10 divided by 8, so like 1.2 millimeters, which I think is, n I would actually like a little bit more granularity, granularity than that. So a cool way of doing that is to then add 
a second hole here in between. So if we go back to... Uh, how, how do I do that? Oh yeah, I know how to do that. So instead of drilling more holes in the plastic, we just add a second hole that is offset with half a hole in the aluminium part. Um, so here. And now we're gonna get, now we're gonna use some nice logic again. Uh, so if I am, hmm. I'm doing a circular pattern. of this cut feature and I'm gonna choose this axis. Now I'm doing 200 of them. So let's say 400 for computer. But we're gonna do 45. What is half of 45? 22.5. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> We're doing it only here, so we don't have to suppress million of operations. And wait, 360 divided by 8. 360 divided by 16. And then we do 400 divided by 16 on the number. Um, oh, and we can actually keep on going here. So total angle, 360 divided by 32. And 400 divided by 32 doesn't want to do that. Why not? Maybe that's not divisible. Should be, right? No. And then I'm going to suppress some of them. Uh, do, 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 do. So I want to offset this hole with one and a half. So this one would be a... No, how, how am I thinking? Should I just have taken 200? We had 200. Okay, um, maybe... Maybe I am not in control over this right now. Let's take 200 again. Yeah, this doesn't work out actually. I'm sorry I led you into a into a rabbit hole. <laughs> Just back away slowly. <laughs> uh how to do this? I wanna shift it over. Hmm. Maybe I have to just suppress, maybe we can do full angle because with the angle, we do full angle. Uh, maybe I just have to suppress these ones that hit the thing. We do 200, too many pattern instances. Consider using optimized, okay. Um, so th these are the normal holes, but I wanna shift them. So we do 400 and now I know it's, this looks much better, so I'm gonna, Suppress you and you are, it's you I want. So I'm just going to suppress these that hits the. So let's see if Fusion will accept me for this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at that, everyone. Wow. Look at happen. that. So this hole is now offset with half, and we can check that very fast by 
uh, checking from the drum from the top. Check this. Wow. I might not be the fastest, but I, I, I do, I did find the way. You can see that, which means that if we're using this half setting, we can switch the surface of my friends 0.8 millimeter on the top drum. Uh, so let's just un isolate all. And let's activate this one. So with this granularity, where is our thing? Do 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 Here we go. <laughs> These files are so new, so I haven't I haven't I, I'm not finding my way around them so fast. Apologize for all the clicking. Now, if we move one step here, we have to know which hole, so this is not so user friendly. I would like some kind of indicator or something. We can switch this surface 0 0.8 millimeter. That is this much. Wow. Can you show it? I can absolutely show it. So I think that should be enough. <laughs> We can add, so I don't think you could also make this go down the other way. Um, so it has, um, so it's also secured at the other side of the drum. I am pretty sure that will be completely unnecessary. And we should over-engineer when we need to, not not stupid things like this, because that will be two operations to uh, uh, adjust. The one issue right now is that we don't really see uh, the result. And in that sense, it would be better to have all this on the outside of the drum. Hmm. Because if we had it on the outside of the drum, we could make a little pointer that came up on the side, and then we could engrave, when we're using our rotary CNC machine, we could engrave numbers for each setting. Um. Oh, I realized something. Ooh. No, I'm stupid. <laughs> <laughs> you realize you're stupid. Okay. Um, yeah, if we had a little pointer, that would work. So, what do you think about this system if we compare this to um, our little um, timing clutch that we had here on the original machine? That was hard to, actually hard to, a little bit hard to adjust. It really worked. What do you think? I feel like the guy in the intro who just got knocked down <laughs> of by brilliance of this new system, of course. It's pretty elegant, isn't it? Yes. Because also we're going to have a leverage advantage. Like this pin is out here. It will hold this pulley very, very strongly. Um... But what I'm thinking about now is the sideways space. Let's let's look at our blocking model. So if we think of, because as you can see here, the drum goes further out than than the drums are. If we look at it from the front, um, the oh, you know what? Look here behind the bass guitar. Mm -hmm. There's space. Here's a lot of space. So I can't use... This is where we should put it. Actually, we should move it over to the other side. Because behind the bass guitar, we don't want any programming on this. And the sad truth... Let's add the flywheel. I want to talk about the flywheel now. Uh, because this big flywheel 
I realized that can be on the same axle as the um, loop drum. Um, doo -doo -doo, doo -doo -doo, doo -doo -doo. F FL3 UV3 quantity can't be half. Use round in parentheses 400 divided by 32 to have integer value. Uh, don't know what he's referring to. 400 divided by 32 is... It didn't allow me to do that one. Let's see what it's in for. Can you say what that becomes? 400 divided by 32 should be a whole number integer. 12 and a half. Ah, thank you. Ah, Gretzky. Gretzky skating where the fuck is going. But wasn't Gretzky making all the passes? Or was he scoring as well? It was more famous for setting up his players as well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was brilliant all over the place. Okay. Um, he has the most most goals ever, so... So what we're just finding out here is that perhaps we should just no, wait. Yeah, so this is a kind of big decision right here where where to put these belts. Since this is the front side facing the audience, I do think it would be cool to see the belts over here. Um, but form from function, right? <laughs> I want to save space for levers on my side. I need a lot of mechanical levers. That's why I wanted the belts on the other side. And maybe, sadly, we have to put a flywheel here behind the base. But that's close to me, which is dangerous. Okay, yeah, flywheel, that's where we're. Let's put the flywheel in place. Here. I'm going to take a quick short break. We're just heading out and I'm going to see if there's some thinking oil. Do you want the refill, my friend? I have actually. Thank you. Do you want me to heat it up for you? Yes, please. Yes. That would be fantastic. Um, so I'm going to create a new component. Now I already had that one. Loop shaft. I'm just going to ex revolve the loop shaft. So... Where is that sketch? Um, sketches are hidden. Here's the sketch. Oh, the sketch is there. I'm blind. So let's use revolve. And this is something I learned again from uh, Marius, I think. Like instead of using like circles to to try to make a lot of round things with with revolve, uh, rather than um, circles. So now we have this shaft and another nice thing. If you want to alter things without being in the sketch, just uh, go here and uh, choose show dimension. If you show the dimension, the dimensions are shown also out here in the physical space. And it's super nice to just pull things like this. Um, I don't think I can add a dimension here, but I know I can alter these ones. So I just want this to stick out longer for now. I can just do it like that. Okay, so I'm coming up against a tricky trade-off because since we're almost going to have no gears right now on this machine at all, I want to make a showpiece of the big flywheel because the flywheel is going to be the heart of this machine. And 
space-wise, it makes so much more sense to put it behind the bass guitar. But no one will see it ever. And it's it is it is the you know when you see like the flywheel on a small little mechanical clock, that's the thing that creates the magic. So for now I'm gonna fight to have it on the visual side. Where it's also furthest away from my hands. I wanna make this it's a wonder I didn't cut my hands off of, on the Marmachine X. If I would have lost balance once during the thir three years I was working with that, and my ha hand had come into the gear when the electric motor on, my hand would be cut off. It was actually like s super irresponsible all these years. And uh, for this machine, I want to kind of... So maybe that's the... Maybe that's what I can tell myself to allow myself to put the flywheel on the more cool looking place. <laughs> For safety. So let's create, and we already have a new component 0303 flywheel. I don't know if I will design it in here. I might, I might. I might design it um, in its own design later. I, don't, I, I just want to put it in for now. Um, plane at angle on this line, not on the physical body. Boom. Sketch on that plane. I should also name the planes, but... And... Let's project some useful geometries. I'm hiding stuff that I don't want to project from. So I'm I'm trying to be very um because I'm trying to be very deliberate about what I am projecting from. So I'm projecting from the CAD skeleton and it's this line I wanna I wanna project. And now I'm hiding that as well. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Where is the drum? Oh, I put it. I put this drum in the wrong place in the design. I wonder if I can move it. With, no, the, the move command comes in the timeline. Never mind. Um, that's why I couldn't find it. I'm going to ignore that for now. So this flywheel is going to be much larger than... Should we maybe just make it the same outer diameter as the, as the drum, perhaps? Um, 892. Let's make it 892 for fun. That's going to look very um, engineered. And let's make it chunky. Let's make a chunky rim. Chunk. And I did a fancy sketch of some spokes the other day in a stream the other day. I'm going to try to do the same thing here. Um, so, how can I make parametric spokes with the fewest... Uh, uh, line, sketch lines as possible. Uh, so check this out. One, I'm gonna do come a little closer. One mirror line, and then I'm going to CAD half of the. Um, 
hole between the spokes. So I'm I'm cutting the holes. I'm not cutting the spokes. So here you can kind of see that it starts to look like the, the empty hole uh, between some spokes. And, that, and then the angle of this line is going to be determined by the spoke width. And I make a circle in the center here and this is going to be the spoke width. So I want 60 centimeters wide spokes. Then I'm going to make this line tangential to that center circle that went wrong. Why? Why? Hannes is listening to our live it's, stream in the phone. You should check this out. There's a cool live stream going on. <laughs> Some crazy guy is building a marble machine. <laughs> wow. Live stream septicon. Seption. What have I done wrong now? Maybe it needs this lines first. What am I doing wrong? It's first. I want to just remind myself of how I did this the other day because it was nice. It was nice. 50. Hundred now, ten now, forty. And you are tangential to you. Why don't you want to work with me? De -de 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 -de. Lucas Vandal wrote something interesting here, perhaps. If, re if retentioning the belt isn't too complicated, holes are on the complete circumference of the drum might not be necessary. And by the way, tensioning the belt from the inside and minimizing the amount the tensioner needs to move the belt to tension will reduce wear resistance and noise. I didn't understand uh, the first thing. If... if Retensioning the belt isn't too complicated. Holes around the complete circumference of the drum might not be necessary. It the the holes in the drum is not related to the belt tensioning. Um, I'm not fully understanding. I discussed with Lucas yesterday, by the way, about uh, what kind of programming uh, thing to use, like paper or um, paper with holes. It was super fun. Lucas has the Siegfried's Music Instrument Museum in Rudesheim, uh, where the original machines will be um, exhibited eventually. Yeah. So I managed to get the line tangential. Ah, oh, this was messy. Maybe now an angle. 360 divided by 5. No. 
Uh, we figured this out the other stream. 32. No. Oh my god, I'm crossing the river to fetch water right now. <laughs> but does the water taste good? It tastes delicious, honest, 3000. <laughs> like this newly fresh thinker oil right in front of you. Okay, I'm gonna have, I, 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 I solved it in the other stream. Or maybe this one is too small. So I'm just going to accept some, um, I'm just going to accept this now. So now I'm mirroring. I hate when I like start something and say like, now I'm going to show you something. <laughs> and then I prepare fail. to get your mind blown. Everybody. And then I completely fail. <laughs> okay, so Lucas wrote here again. If you can remove the tensioning easily, you can use the belt to change the timing too. Uh, but the second part of the message is more important anyways. And that was about the tensioning the belt from the inside. Minimizing the amount the tensioner needs to move the belt to tension will reduce wear resistance and noise. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. S skipping the... Um... Yeah, now I, I now I see what you mean, Lucas. You mean uh, lifting the belt and skipping a tooth on the belt. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, that would have worked. But I think the locking pin is cleaner, so you don't have to retension the belt. And we can get um, a higher granularity. Now I'm just going to make a circular pattern from this. Took me forever. I tried to. I tried to do a neat cutting, five spokes, and you can see it all sucks. <sighs> we figured this out in the other stream, Hannes. Well, don't look at me. <laughs> I don't remember. 32. Yeah, now they're parallel. Or maybe this is just a little bit too much. 30. Here we... No. <laughs> now they're not parallel. 36. Paul says, I don't think it should be parallel to the radius if it's tangent to axle. It's tangential to this one. I think probably you're right, but I, I don't I didn't really understand it. Are these parallel now? Ten prodas, not angle but parallel. I'm just shouting things out here. Yeah, yeah, I good. know what nothing means. 35. <laughs> uh, yeah, somewhere I lost. Um, somewhere I lost. But my point is now, now I can control the width of the spokes with the diameter of this circle in here. So if I go 40, you can see the spokes becomes wider. If I go 60, the spokes becomes wider. So that's a little bit elegant. 10 products make it parallel to the spokes. And David Mortara, I think you need to remove the parallel constraint between the straight line and the two curves. Between the straight line. We don't, we don't have... I just have a tangential constraint into this circle. So this line is tangential to this circle. So it's always parallel with the center from the center coming out of the center. Oh, wait. Oh, wait, wait, wait. We remove this. Now I realize we need a line coming from the center anywhere. And now I need to tell this line to be parallel to this line. And that's it. You got it? But this hasn't f followed. M. Nyxek. No angle, but parallel to the radius. Mm -hmm. Parallel to the radius. Okay. You know what? I'm going to revisit this later. I don't want to bore the audience too, too 
parallel but to the okay now we're gonna solve it um parallel to the radius i don't understand um now it's parallel from here remove the angle and make the lines parallel no wait if i put an angle on this line now here which is going to be then um 360 divided in uh, 10. Yes, there we go. I think I got it. The middle line is 36, 360 divided in 10. And yeah, I got it. Now the spokes are parallel. And we, we, can, we can prove that by measuring from here up to there is 40. And if I measure here, it will be 40 as well. It is 40, but it's it's 39 point something, but it's actually 40. <laughs> <laughs> Just because you say so. <laughs> yes, because I say so. And now we still have the spoke width. Um, no, they, they have to be parallel because this line is mirrored over here and this is just a circular pattern. Okay, I got there in the end. I had to I had to use this, this center line um, and put the angle of that. And if I want to turn the spokes now, no, I'm not going to do that. Okay, here we go, everyone. Uh, thank you for uh, tuning in. <laughs> <laughs> I see a new hashtag emerging here from the Funk Wallace. I'm on team hashtag internal flywheel. Make a fly drum shaped flywheel inside the drum or programming wheel. It's compact and safer than exposed flywheel. This has crossed my mind and this is very doable and this is an idea that i had so let's let's um let's put that in our uh, shopee design requirements um flywheel inside loop machine i definitely i definitely want to put it inside the loop machine not inside the um, programming wheel just because it's lower and and um the weight Cent yeah, the, the center of gravity should be low. And this, you're challenging me right now because aesthetically, um, to hide our most beautiful wheel inside the drum, and we have to also reach, we have to reach the flywheel. So there are some, but it's definitely an idea. Uh, Hmm. I'm going to move this wheel in with offset. Um, start offset minus five, minus 200. Oh, minus 200. Okay, Hannes 3000. Should we do it? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? So, so uh, we still need to. We, need, we still need a way to access. We still need a way to spin the flywheel, which means that we have to move. This belt would need to move to the other side. Oh, so if we move the belt, maybe we can have the flywheel right at the beginning. But if we move the belt, then we have to move both belts. So this is the suggestion. Let's have a look at that without the sketches. I mean, it, it is cool, it is clean, but it's also, yeah, safety-wise, it's great. But it would move all the belts over to my side. Because I can't have the belts here and the flywheel inside. Because I need to access to power the flywheel. Put the flywheel on the other side. Yeah, that, that's... Yeah. That hurts. Hurts, man. <laughs> it hurts! <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
It hurts because look at this. Look at this. It's the like it's the it's the heart of this machine. This flywheel is gonna be so impressive and it's gonna sp it's I mean in the end. Yeah. It doesn't even matter. <laughs> What's that song? It's Linkin Park, no? Let's make the flywheel red. This is going to be steampunky. Oh yeah. Look at the oh maybe we should have a red flywheel. Oh, oh, oh yeah. <laughs> Maroon flywheel. <laughs> um It preys on noise. <laughs> <laughs> Every uh, now and then, we just need a reminder. Yeah, so this is where my... Uh, I mean... Yeah, this is hard. This is hard times. Because this is going to look ridiculously cool, okay? <laughs> um, and I mean, we, we have to look at how much we have to look at what we actually would win from tucking it inside. It's a, it's safety, yes. With, yes, maybe. But the belt has to go somewhere else, and to move the flywheel down the other end, which would look like this. Oh, more. Lee Smith, put the flywheel on the back and make it huge so it can <laughs> still be seen. I think it's already like almost a meter, so it's already a giant thing. So I don't want to put it bigger. It looks like it's too big right now. I took the outside diameter. Let's change that. Uh, let's make this get visible. 892... 870? It's not enough. 850. Mr. Gonsonator, loop wheel transparent? Question mark. Oh, hey Gonzo. <laughs> <laughs> Always nice, the heroes, it's the Marvel Endgame again, heroes assemble, Avengers assemble. Yeah. <laughs> um, now th this is HTPE, uh, and HTPE does, is not available, transparent. Yet? <laughs> <laughs> Someone will make it now. No custom material science hopefully <laughs> needed for this machine to work. Oh, here everybody starts chiming in now. Form from function. Come on. Oh, you're killing me. <laughs> oh, my flywheel. Oh, no, my flywheel, as Eric Rosen would have said. <laughs> <laughs> if, you, if you get it, you get it. Um, oh, no, my flywheel. Now, nobody puts babe in the corner, okay? Form from function. Okay, but what is what is the actual function? Um, I mean, when you when when your argument is it looks cool, then it's not form from function, right? Is it, perhaps? Yeah. Is it better that it's bigger and sits next to the machine? No, it can be the, it can be the same size, but since the since I need to access it with, and I also want to break it. And um, not break, I, I mean, like a car brake. Um, this is going to be the working assumption for now. Outside? Yeah. Sorry to hear that. Hashtag team internal flywheel. <laughs> it takes a while. Let's see what happens in the future. Okay. Let's go back to some... Let's think. Let's go back to this. <laughs> Cognomorco function equals you not losing fingers. 
yeah that's that is uh, <laughs> that's true that's true that's true that's true but um so the thing is if we need this thing super wide anyway we don't have an issue because currently so it depends on how many vibraphone notes we want and it also depends if we're going to allow anything to be on outside of the frame i i feel it would be cool to not have anything on the outside but behind the bass it's like a natural this is like a supernatural place just also maybe for the belts maybe not for the belts Barnstormer322, I do think the flywheel on the side might be mechanically simpler because then you don't need concentric axles and stuff. Yeah, you, so you mean that we can put a flywheel on, on, on its own on its own position. It doesn't have to be concentric with the loop. Mm -hmm. um, that's true. But... So my issue, let's make the pulleys. Let's not beat around the bush. Let's make the flywheel pulley. Um, <laughs> deleted. New design requirement. Machine must be playable with only six fingers in case of accidents. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. <laughs> So this is why I love um, doing Shaft's master sketches. So now when I want a pulley, I can just make the profile of the pulley here. And we can even add the flanges right away, uh, like this. And we're just going to revolve it, which is uh, super nice. D D D D D. So let's go for a 20 millimeter, 16 millimeter timing belt, maybe. So let's do this 18. Let's do this four. This is not like the real pulley. I'm just, just doing something. You are collinear with you. And what, you are. What kind of problems did we run into with the flywheel on the MMX. It was too weak. Too weak. So yes, you need I, something bigger. Yeah, I need it bigger. And bigger is much better than heavier when it comes to um, flywheels is what I have learned. Mm -hmm. But you eventually got some safety plastic on the flywheel, right? Yeah. Yeah. So that's at least something. So I'm not doing this really nicely right now. I'm just gonna move it in visually. Should of course have these connected um, CAD wise soon. I am just thinking in CAD right now. New component, zero three, zero four, flywheel. Pulley. And that has to be smaller, smaller because we want to gear it up a lot. So I'm going to make it pretty, pretty small. And let's revolve this little thing over here. And there's our pulley. It's always magical, isn't it? The revolving of, of a profile. So my point is that since we need to access the pulley with a belt, having the belt next to the drum, like on the other side, um, forces us to like add extra width to the frame on that side. 
maybe that's okay. D D D D D D D D D. So let's now make the corresponding pulley on the drive shaft. So same thing there. Um, and actually, very soon we should actually make a parameter for this pulley position. Mm -hmm. So this is what we did last week. Fig figured out how to use global parameters. Yes, it in was Fusion beautiful. It was kind of beautiful, and I actually I redid my design, so I'm not um, I'm not using them as excessively. Someone also said in chat, global parameters are cool, but use only for the necessary stuff. What did we say here? Eighteen four. And this has to be much larger. So let's do 150. Ah, see, we have a big pulley on this shaft, which means that maybe we don't want this behind the base because maybe we don't have space for this uh, large pulley behind the base guitar because I've seen that it has to sit really close to the shaft. Um, so now I'm going to show you the virtues of global parameters again. Yes, please uh, <laughs> do it again. So um, can we get a save also? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a save right here. And can we? Can I get a cheers from you? Oh yes, good point. Ah, ah, ah. cheers! Cheers! Cheers, everyone! <laughs> Oh. Yahoo! Reinvigorated. There we go. Ready for everything. Oh, I saw John was asking, like, why are you using these gears? Because, because. <laughs> because. <laughs> it plays some noise. <laughs> oh, sorry, I missed my cue. Oh my god. It prays <laughs> on noise. Where, where were you? Were you reading chat or something? Other yeah, useful? you know. You know. Sometimes it do different things. New component. Zero, three, zero, zero, two, zero, two. I don't really care. Zero, two, zero, two. Um, drive fully. Let's revolve this, and I'm going to tell you um, the issue we are facing here. So, these pulleys are not lining up, as you can see here. And when you think of parameters, you have to think of stuff that you know will always be true. This pulley and this flywheel pulley will always be on the same position. So, let's make a parameter. Oh, let's do it. Um, and I don't even have to do it in the global. I can just do it in this one design. So, let's add a user parameter in this design. Uh, fly, pulley, distance. And we do it from the origin, so we just put 500 for now. Boom. And if we show dimensions on... On our sketch here. Oh, the dimensions are there. And Vasily Puko. For some reason, I'm getting very addicted to the new format of Vintigotan every day. Love you guys. Thank you very much for that beautiful comment. And for all of those who are wondering, yes, we will do summaries of what we've been doing uh, during the weeks on our main channel. We aim for Wednesdays for that. So for those of you who want shorter snappier snippets of what we've been doing. We will update everyone on that channel. 
Yeah, thank you so much for that comment. It it's uh, it means a lot. We we are getting addicted to this as well. Oh, like yes. we we were not supposed to meet yesterday, and all of a sudden, Hannes just coming to the studio because I'm like she I'm cheating in the studio. <laughs> yes, and I then was thinking I can sneak in there now because no one will be there. So I was like, okay, I can prepare something for the stream. Who was here if not Martin? So we both <laughs> cheated yesterday. So now I've used the newly created parameter here, fly pulley distance for both pulleys to the same origin point, which means that now they will always line up. And of course, now we can see that they're on the wrong distance. Um, they're on the wrong place. So let me show you this from above. And I just go into my parameter list and I change 500. Let's favorite this. I change 500 to 750. And the pulleys are moving in unison. So let's do 700. These pulleys are now forever linked. Boom. Boom. And for this connection, I don't want to use a silent sync belt. I think I want to use a normal uh, flat belt. But why? Actually, I don't know. Maybe because it costs so much money. I have the feeling a flat belt is more silent than a timing belt. That's actually why. And so here's my point. This big pulley would maybe be in the way if we try to put it right here behind the bass guitar. Because... You can see there's not a lot of space there. Oh, do you know what we're going to do now, Hannes? Oh, tell me. <laughs> yes. So, um, I, want a, I want a super strong pedal uh, on this machine. And so I want to plan two cam... I think it's called camshafts. So if we head into this master sketch, um, I think I want one camshaft here. And I want one camshaft here. Um, that's going to be offset and I'm going to cut them right now. Um, So basically, I'm I'm pausing my flywheel position uh, uh, discussion a little bit, just to um, yeah, just to get a little pause. Yes. Um, let's make them seventy. Let's make you same length as you, and then we know for now that they are. Did I have axle shaft diameter? Yes, look at this. I have a shaft diameter global constraint, but since it's the radius, I have to divide by two and it becomes 10 millimeters. So I just write shaft and I divide that by two. And then everything will, if I change it in the list, it will upgrade everywhere. Beautiful. Thank you. And now the offset. Um, actually, we can take this measurement from the Marmachine X because I was doing like there's a video when I'm when I'm screwing on like a board and I'm trying like the lift of the foot. And I think on the Marmachine X it was kind of good. Maybe a little bit more uh, distance. Where is the marble machine? X. Zero, zero, zero. Here we go. So what I'm doing now is the offset that is right here. So let me isolate that a little bit. Isolate. So let me hide this thing. Yeah, so here is the offset. So if we go from this to the center of this, no, why are you not letting me, maybe from this to this, here we go, 45 millimeters is the 
camshaft offset and I'm going I'm a little bit uh, taller now since <laughs> since some years have passed <laughs> since I'm still growing apparently I drank some strange water in in the Fangorn woods <laughs> which means that we can do five, five millimeter extra offset wow which will result in a travel of the pedal of nine centimeters uh, so let's head back to this offset Look at this. It was already 50. Oh. Meant to be. Meant to be. Um, which also means that... Okay. Yeah, the flywheel position is going to be a point of debate for a long time. <laughs> 350 I wanted. 350. Now I want a line here. So let's just make a 10 millimeter overlap between these. We need a disc there. And then we need a disc here. 10. Then I want to repeat the same thing over here somewhere. Hundred fifty. I'm gonna break the shaft and attach the pedal in two places on what I think is called a camshaft. We're going to see very soon what is happening here. Let's do it like that. So now we need to look at the extrusion feature, the revolve feature of this shaft. And we're going to deselect all the profiles and we're just going to select um, this part. And let's head back to that and make some more. Drive shaft, new component, drive shaft two, and then revolve the middle part. So when I when I'm up against a hard problem like the flywheel harness, I like to like just CAD something else for yeah. some time. Let it simmer for a while. Yeah. Marinate. Marinate that issue. So which team is strongest now for flywheel positioning? They've been silent for a while here, no? Now there's a lot of talk about V-belts. For, for the flywheel? Yeah, and the being or no being of uh, how much they slip. Yeah. Uh, on the on the Marm Machine X, there was no like slipping. Um, mm. I want to mm. the flat belt. We could dis we could disconnect it. Um, yeah. Okay. Let's talk about that later. So here's the three shafts in the middle. Now I'm going to revolve these two extra camshaft pieces. Uh, so I'm making a new component per piece. People are wondering that a minor slip of the belt can mess up the musical timing. <laughs> Theoretically, yes. Uh, but the rotation of the flywheel is not mathematically connected like the two drums are. And basically, it's so strong, so it doesn't slip. You can even say that perhaps slippage can be a security thing, that if something happens, it's good if the belt slips. Um, but we're rather going to build that with the same security we have in the last flywheel with the ball de spring loaded ball detents. Oh, that was clutch. brilliant. That was Alex from Munich. Yeah, props. So props. great. Props. 
camshaft 2. Let's revolve our little friend over here. The happy little camshaft is our <laughs> own world. We can do what we want. <laughs> we don't make mistakes. We only have little CAD accidents. What did you think of the drama documentary of Bob Ross Hannes? I haven't seen it yet. What? No, I know, I know. You're culturally totally non-relevant. Yeah, I should just <laughs> log off this stream. I'm not worthy to be here. Conversation just died. Yeah, so much for that. Um, yeah, we basically have nothing to discuss now. No. Sorry, chat. <laughs> and now... You just saw a friendship die live. <laughs> <laughs> How serious do I need to be around this? Well, let's be a little bit serious, shall we? Oh, I don't... Okay, earlier oh. in this stream, I talked about the gloriousness of offsetting an extrusion command. And uh, Rocky, or what his name was, it was <laughs> something like that, said he wanted to marry the offset feature in the extrude com com uh, command. Now I'm going to show you why. Some people want to marry this constraint. So I was thinking that I want to do the same cutoffs that we did on the first machine. Check this out. Master sketch? We only need to use the master sketch. Now this is going to be epic. Um, I'm going to draw a um, rectangle like this. Boom. This is uh, 10. This is 20. And I'm going to do this on all the... Um, on all the ends. Okay, this has gotten me excited right now on this 3000. So the reason that Rocky, <laughs> what his name was something else, wanted to marry the offset feature was that you can make complicated parts with very few sketches. And this is exactly what is going to happen right here. It's collinear with you. Just give me some time to draw all these rectangles. You are equal to you. You are equal to you. Yeah, so let's remove. Also, someone taught me never enter the same value twice. Mm -hmm. um, just use the equal command. You are equal to you. And you are equal to you. That way... This is mini parametric. If I do 30, all of the rectangles are changing. Mm. You see that? Mm. 20. That's a sight for sore eyes. <laughs> <laughs> are your eyes sore? <laughs> <laughs> and here we have a new hashtag. Hashtag crank, not cam. So it's a crankshaft, not a camshaft. Hmm. David E. Martin is not a camshaft, it's a crankshaft. So, like... So, do you mean crank as in the handle, or is that um, actually a, like a, a, a term that I'm unaware of? I think it's a term, right? Let's see what chat has to say. It's going to be a fine explanation soon. And here I made a big mistake. I catted this twice. This should be mirrored. If we just want the same thing. Or should it? I hate mirror because of the... No, I'm not going to mirror... Actually, I'm not going to mirror this. Because sometimes when you go too fancy, things build up on you. So I'm actually not going to mirror this. Or should I? Should I actually maybe mirror this? I'm going to mirror this. <laughs> Thank you for taking us along that adventure in your head. <laughs> <laughs> so the reason why I didn't want to mirror it first is because you have to keep track on the fact that you actually did mirror it. And I didn't trust myself to do that. But this is my mirror line. 
So I'm just gonna change. I'm just gonna choose all this, all this jazz. And we're gonna mirror this. Hit S, hit mirror. I already choose what I want to mirror. Um, now I want to choose the line, mirror it over there, and you can see it all appears over here. Just checking that we have everything. And then the separation between these two mirrored instances is driven by this in the middle. So if I do 110 here, I do have some positional control over the over the other thing that I mirrored. I'm mir I'm moving the mirroring line here. So it kind of makes sense. And now it's cool because if I if I go in and change uh, a value here, it will change automatically everything. Ah, here. that's brill. So as I said in the beginning, 40, boom, you see that the mirror has changed as well. Oof. Oof. Sweetness. And now, that was a tangent, because now you can see this revolve feature has died. We can zoom in on the timeline. Uh, for some reason it died, but we can just edit that revolve feature. It thinks it has missing profiles. It has missing profiles because we mirrored it. I just have to re-select it. And now the timeline is happy again. Okay, here we go. Here do you, comes. Do you want to hear explanation first about the camshaft? Um oh. And the crankshaft. Yeah. Yes, please. From Jacob Clayden. A camshaft uses egg-shaped cams to open and close engine valves. One cam per valve, while a crankshaft converts cranks, the up-down motion of the pistons, to rotational motion. And then we have a simpler explanation down here from Tegeneron. Camshaft opens and closes valves in an engine. Craft crankshaft turns stuff. Ah, oh, so it's crank like in turning. Because I always think crank as in the music box handle. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, this was amazing explanation. So it's a crankshaft. Cool. You know what? Gretzkis. Gretzkis. Thanks to you, we can now fix this crankshaft. I wish I had a better zoom sometimes. Can't have it all, my friend. What? <laughs> Okay, so this was a long digression from the actual business. So here we come to the business end. I've now prepared something amazing. So we want some flat spots of, on all this. Maybe this is not how it's going to be machined in the future. Maybe it is. But the cool thing is here, the power of the extrusion command. I'm choosing the extrusion command. And I'm choosing all these rectangles that we made. All of them. Boom, boom, boom. Boom, 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 boom. Okay? Yeah. There we go. So now I want to cut. But if I start just cutting like this, we cut off the whole half of all these profiles. And I don't want that. So start. Oh, let me show you Let's this. Let's do this. Yeah. Start is on a profile plane. No, we're going to use an offset. So now I can choose how far away from the center I want to start to cut. So um, the shaft is 20 millimeter. Let's say we want to end up with a 10 millimeter uh, thing. So let's do five millimeter. Mm -mm 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 -mm. And so they lived happily ever <laughs> after. <laughs> can we do that again? Or, or should I just mirror... Now let's just make another. I can mirror it over the center plane. Yeah, let's just mirror this command over the center plane. Um, mirror feature. I'm going to mirror the cut feature I just did on uh, on that plane. I need the plane though. Here, here's my plate. No. Okay, now I got. F Beep. What? <laughs> Let's just make another extrusion. No, I'm just gonna find a plane. Um. Ooh. 
where is that plane? I created this sketch. This sketch must have been... I think I found a misplaced plane. Here's the plane. I'm gonna start uh, naming my planes. So this is crank shaft, or this is actually a drive shaft. Drive shaft center plane. And now we can mirror the cutting operation over that plane. Uh, mirror features, I choose the cutting operation. And mirror plane, and I actually like to select the planes from the browser sometimes when when you don't find them. Now it's edit <coughs> edit the extrusion and call it symmetrical. Mm -hmm. Ooh, will that work? Said two four four eight. I was two, thinking. Four. Are you Gretzky? No, see, it doesn't work. I was thinking, it doesn't work with the offset. Um, good thinking though, but it, do it doesn't work. Well, honorary Gretzky at least. <laughs> honorary <laughs> Gretzky, that's, you never want that actually. Um, Okay, so now when I mirror this, <laughs> they 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 don't miss anything. You now have a driver shaft. Yeah, I, I saw it. I saw it. <laughs> why does it think that we want that? Why doesn't it understand that this is a cutting operation now when we mirror this? Huh? Let's mirror. No, oh, it worked. It just. Oh, I found a bug in Fusion. Actually, that was a bug right there. It's not a bug. It's a feature. So look, we have we have we have managed to make all that nice um, geometry from only from the master sketch. So we're creating all this. We can also make center holes and stuff, um, and we have only one sketch. Offset feature, wonderful. Let's make them. But these are called cams, I think. So now chat. I'm gonna make a cam uh, link and let me know if that nomenclature is correct or not. Nomenclature? Nomenclature? What? What are you saying? Nomenclature? Gibberish. <laughs> <laughs> It went through the 3000 computer <laughs> and out came an Zero answer. Zero results. <laughs> Just plain gibberish. Isolate. So let me know what, what the name of this part is. Cam link. We have a cam link 4K. <laughs> So parallel, ah, sorry. Um, so this is going to be 14 perhaps, 14. Marcel Piensip, chemist here, I approve nomenclature. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, you heard it from a chemist. It's it's like a synonym for lingo, isn't it? Like a specific choice of words that belong to a specific like group. And here you have Blair Spurg Spurt Burglar. The part is called a connectatron. <laughs> Perhaps I should say that like Optimus Prime actually. It's a connectatron. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, 
connected. Shaftlink? Could that be it? Oh, we already have it. Connectatron. <laughs> Connectatron. Oh. So I've been thinking about welds compared to... <laughs> As you do. <laughs> <laughs> compared to... Um, fasteners. And this is like this interesting example. If... Like this could be easily be weldable, but welds, even with professionals, welds are causing, um, can cause um, I'm going to actually join these. Welds can cause distortion and stuff. And yeah, so What's chat thinking? You think this should be a weld or should be fasteners? And I get here from Kirsty Shadow Dancer. Nomenclature literally means commonly called. There we go. Oh, wow. Commonly called. Commonly called. So I'm just going to join these. There you go. See where I'm going with this? Uh -huh, a little Gretzky over there. <laughs> Fastener is only this time, please. Oh yeah, I'm 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 with you. I'm with you. Yeah, James. James says fasteners only. Yeah. Interesting. Why, James? I'm I'm with you. But Josh why? Hester fasteners fastener, no weld press fit. Team fasteners are weld, going strong. Fasteners fasteners. Okay. <laughs> Not a lot of welders out there. Use fasteners to avoid warping and stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm with you so much, and I'm so happy to have this uh, direct feedback. Um, let's head over to our design uh, requirements. Fasteners uh, over welds. Um, use fasteners over welds for... Uh, Modularity is the wrong word, and uh, non-warping, and ease of assembly, and uh, correcting mistakes. Never mind spelling. Robert uh, Robert Jepson fasteners would make assembly and repair easier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. Chat has spoken. Chat has spoken. So and now, then, thanks to you saying that, we can actually show immediately the power of um, the master sketch because I can make this internal M8 holes um, from the same sketch. So if we head into this sketch, I can just do uh, this. So this is the length. So let's say we want a 20 millimeter. I have heard that if you have an M8 thread, you only need 8 millimeter length of threads to receive maximum strength. So let's over-engineer it with uh, 15. Then we can protrude 12 millimeter with the bolt, maybe. And we're already over-engineered and we don't have to tap and drill more than necessary. I just want to read from Javinsky here. Fasteners, because you won't get screwed. <laughs> <laughs> just <laughs> that's brilliant right there that is that is brilliance so let's do four here and the Gretzkys are probably already skating where this puck is going but as you can see now we will be able to drill these holes uh, from this one sketch just having to think uh where to put them like this and no not in the center and like this and I'm not adding any measurements because I'm going to use equal here so you are equal as you you are equal as you you are equal as you 
u are equal as u and u are equal as u everything all lines turn black perfect now let's mirror these so now i'm actually happy that i i did a mirroring before mirror these new ones over the same mirroring line here no so <clears throat> okay while we wait for this i want to show people some context what are we actually doing right here we the plan the initial plan for Marble Machine 3 is to finish this digital CAD model of Marble Machine 3. Then, step 2a, if CAD is promising, manufacture a physical machine. 2b, if CAD is not promising, I'll finally be able to give up on this whole idea and find something else to do with my life. <laughs> <laughs> this is a big Hail Mary right here. We're going at it hard <laughs> one last time. The two prototypes has taught us a lot of things. What's a Hail Mary? One last try. What, what does it come from? I don't know. He, chat will tell us. Chat will tell us. Educate us. Um, so now we can return to drill. See, there's no hole here. So to drill this hole, I can return to the revolve command and deselect this profile. Et voila, we have a hole. Wow. Are you are you with me or are you with me? <laughs> <laughs> so no no more sketches needed. It's just super fun. Um, we have to do the same over here. It's kind of nice, isn't it? Okay, so Hail Mary, it's an American football play. I should know that since I actually watch NFL. So yeah, it's when you're all, when you're on the, let's say, fourth and goal or something like that, and you have one last try to do it. Lay everything on the line. One Hail Mary. There we go. So you just hoping like for a miracle. One one player is running and one player is just throwing the ball and see if they can run. And it's get the last it. play they have and like, okay, we need to put everything on the line. If this succeeds, we tie or win the game. Otherwise, we lose. But I don't think that's the ori etymological origin of the word, right? Who knows? So we want to know the etymological origin of the word, not only how it's used. But maybe it comes from that. But who was Mary? Isn't it a song like who who is Mary? Who the hell is Mary? <laughs> Mary, Mary. Alice, well, you mean? Alice, I meant. <laughs> <laughs> Origin of Hail Mary is a Christian prayer also, people say here. That's probably more uh, like uh, the real origin, yeah, then. Hail Mary full of grace, the Lord is with me. It means you need to pray before you try something, Jesse Parker said here. I've heard it in football, though. So, if we're going to use a fastener here, we don't want to design these to be... We want pressure, so I want to remove one millimeter at least, maybe two. One millimeter should be enough with machining. Um, so let's see how we can do that without screwing up the CAD. Um, I don't want to, I want to do everything in, so this, I don't think I can do this nicely. What happens if we do nine here? No, that does not work. Here I get a history lesson though from Root Moo, December 28th, 1975. See Cowboys versus Vikings rivalry. When Cowboys quarterback Roger Staubach said about his game-winning touchdown pass to wide receiver Drew Pearson, I closed my eyes and said a Hail Mary. Ah, uh, There we have it. That's a connection from the Bible to the football. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah, hope it's not a... 
strategy? What do you say? Hope is hope is not a plan. No, hope is not a strategy. Yeah. I <laughs> this morning in the shower I was thinking that we should make an I believed t shirt. <laughs> <laughs> you thought you should have <laughs> <laughs> the same t-shirt just add like an ugly little d i believe and, and relaunch that t-shirt i believed <laughs> i at least i believed wouldn't that be fun <laughs> there's no belief in Mar machine 3 it's engineering okay <laughs> no hail marys here just straight up execution okay um meanwhile I'm in a little spot of bother because I don't get this to... No, that's just... Yeah. My equal command has failed me. No, I want everything to be 9, but I need to... Hmm. Okay, I need to start with... So what is actually... Constrained here. This is constrained. What's ten is this? Is it is this the equal one? Nine. There we go. But it goes the wrong direction. Sorry for some slowness here. It's to expect. I have to make sure that the correct lines are moving now when I remove one millimeter for the for the fasteners to bite. Now this is constrained. And we have the ominous flight alarm, but it's at uh, three o'clock, so it's normal testing. Yeah. No need to worry. Um... So this is what I mean when 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 you, when you do mirror and stuff and you are smart in the beginning you might have to think a couple of steps extra. Yeah, so this is not what I want to have 70 on. I want this to not move. So I do 50 there. And now if I do 9 hmm the top Where's my collinear constraint? I have to remove this one. Do I have a collinear constraint here? I just want to make sure that the correct lines are moving. So this is good for the top one, but it's not good for the bottom one. Nine. Oh. This is collinear with you. And this goes removed. This is... Oh, I'm out of sh screen. I'm sorry, everyone. Uh. No. Oh, maybe this is correct now. This nine millimeters. So if we're lucky, everything worked out over there as well. So now I want to see... Okay, here we did right. You see there's a little gap here. Here is also correct. Here is not correct. Mm -hmm. I had the wrong line moving. Um... So let's do 48 here. Oh. I'm confused now, Hannes. Oh no. Um. No, so you, they can't be collinear. Why are they collinear? Where are they collinear? Here's a collinear. They shouldn't be collinear at all. It should be one millimeter. Oh, exactly. When I read, when you said it, I read Mandracule. 
it's not collinear. It should be one millimeter gap. Exactly. Here to here is one millimeter. Here to here is one millimeter. It's getting hot in here. It's warm on this 3000. It's warm. Why do I have my shirt on? Take it off. Let's go for some serious cadding. Yeah. Throw down the gauntlet. <laughs> I think I messed it up again. Oh. Um, oh, look at this. That looks right. This looks wrong. Of course, it's the it's the joint as well. <sighs> Let's take one at a time. Let's check one at a time. This is correct. Okay. Let's now check if we can make this one correct. This is correct. So why... And this joint is jointed at the wrong place. That's... So I think we have to add this joint rather. I think CAD is correct. Blair Spurt Burglar, one of the one millimeter offsets is in the opposite direction, question mark. Yeah, I think something like that. But first of all, this joint is wrong, so... Delete this joint. I used the wrong side. I was lazy because I actually... I were planning actually to use this side. So... <laughs> it looks so cool! It looks cool! It just cool. flies there! It flies oh. there. It flies there, it's wonderful. And now, for some reason, this one needs to go two millimeter to the left. Yeah, that was the comment. These Gretzkys are skating where the puck is going, right? CAD is always correct, Martin. <laughs> CAD is always correct. So let's move this. S-A-R-Q-F. One millimeter like this. We might still have messed up the joint. Okay, sorry for that extra struggle, uh, but we're getting it. We are getting it. Let's see the damage over here. Do we have this for free? Not yet. Oh, nice comment here from Jeroen Wins. I am only following like 20% of the stream, but it's like motivational therapy to me. I'm listening while at the office, but I can use the excuse that is this is educational content <laughs> <laughs> love to hear that love to hear that so nice to have to have to have your company i th i think the story of of us not giving up i think i think i think that's a good there is something there there is a rocky there is a rocky arc um and I, I would hate to let myself down in not crossing this finishing line ever. And I think like, I think that's the most relatable thing in this project. Everything else is kind of unrelatable. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's wonderful to hear. Let's delete this joint and let's redo it. Here, I'm just going one, one by one here. 
I, I usually don't work with joints, so the reason this is not adding up immediately is because I'm I'm unused to thinking about um look at this. This lined up. So now that works perfectly. So maybe over here is also just a joint issue. Let's delete this one. And so CAD was good because we did mirror it. Boom. And as someone said, they uh, Javinsky said they should add a sound when something snaps into another thing. Oh. One hundred percent with you. Can't you upload a whoosh to to the stream deck and then just be ready? <laughs> should have the transformers sound when they transform. <laughs> Actually, that's not a bad idea. So. Right here, I'm not going to add any fasteners. This is going to be a, a 12 millimeter M8 uh, hex bolt, I think. Um, four of them there, four of them there. And with plenty of um, Loctite, it will never come loose. So that took me longer than I wanted, but... Um, but now we're now it's done. Where's all my parts? Oh, it's my timeline. <laughs> oh no, my timeline. Oh, ho, ho. check this out. <laughs> Here we go. Okay, what should we do now? We have um, maybe we want to have a crank now while at it, so to speak. Yeah. Um, because this is going to basically the way I'm thinking about this is that. Let's make the mechanical drivetrain first. Oh, we need a flywheel belt as well. Um, let's make the... It's starting to look so cool so quickly. You like it? Oh, I'm in love. Oh, we should actually make these tensioners also. Maybe not yet. I'm in love with this aluminium thing. If you missed it in the stream earlier, this um, this is the new timing clutch. Um, let me just hide the sketches. So this uh, part right here can be used with a, what was it called? Ball locking pin. Oh yeah, something like that, yes. Through these holes to adjust the relationship between these drums with 0 0.8 millimeters accuracy. 0 0.8 millimeter is probably quite a lot in musical timing, so maybe we want Maybe we want even. Maybe we want even one grade of um, granularity more. We can have that actually. Oof. Oh, I'm pro it's probably. It's probably good enough. Okay, should we add? No, let's add a flywheel belt. Um, let's go. And let's put this pulley closer to the flywheel and we have that pulley on um, global parameter it's actually not global it's just a parameter actually 55 millimeter let's ju let's just whack it on top of the flywheel for now so we're heading into the parameters list flywheel pulley distance 700 minus 55 if I ever could do that math myself 645. Is it 645? Yeah. Thank you. And there we go. It's on the flywheel. Uh, so let's add the belt now. We have a belt, timing belts assembly. I'm going to just add... This is a little semi-blocking here. I'm going to add the simplest belt I can make. Um, flywheel belt. Oh, people are screaming now. Please save, save. Oh, save. Woo! Whoa. There you got it, chat. Woo! <laughs> I'm going to cheat, okay? Don't at me. I'm just <laughs> going to... I'm going to... Um... Ah, what's happening? I'm going to make a quick belt. It's it's just to see where things will go and stuff. There we go. 
isolate. And look here, I, I know I'm going on and on about this, but for CAD beginners, this, this is maybe the most helpful advice you can ever get. When you want to draw lines, don't try to draw them perfectly. Just draw them and constrain them. So boom and boom and boom and boom. There we have four lines. I don't have to draw them perfectly, but now we can tell them what to do. So we can say that you are coincident with you, you are coincident with you, and you're also, and you are tangential with you, and you are tangential with you. Then I'm just going to repeat the same thing for, for all of them. So to understand like constraints will help you uh, so much. Um, and often when things are not behaving the way you want them be to behave, it's because your constraints sucks, okay? <laughs> 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 Woo! It's, 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 you have to up your constraint game. If things are moving around in, in unforeseen ways, it's because you have not used constraints pro properly. I, there's a YouTube channel, uh, it's called, I think, uh, your productions, your, your production sucks. And it's about music production and it's really fun. It's like, Every video is like starting like your mixes suck or your mastering suck. And then uh, they explain like why they suck. Mm. And you're always like, you're right. <laughs> they <laughs> suck. <laughs> um, let's see. What did we say? 18. Let's make it 18. This looks like a roller coaster. I love it so much. <laughs> yeah, that's why I want I don't want to hide this on the other side of the machine. But yeah. As soon as as soon as I say that I want something to look good, the whole chat is like form from function. Like, yes. What are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> don't have that much fun right now. So yeah. Okay. Wow, I love this. It looks cool, right? Let's see. Um, so let's just for fun. Why is this sticking out like so far? Let's constrain this end to. This is something I talked about in another stream the other day. Then think about like what you want stuff to do. So for example, we never want the shaft to be inside the flywheel pulley. So let's just put it towards the flywheel pulley and let's say, um, let's say that it sticks out a little bit outside the, the pulley. And now when I move the pulley with the global parameter, the, the length of this shaft will always follow. And I'm going to do the same over here. So let's just do 30 for now. Wow. Okay. So now I'm going to, did you see the flywheel moved? Oof. Oof. It does not feel good. So I have to get a grip on reality. <laughs> <laughs> I did some <laughs> cheating on how I placed this flywheel and I'm paying for it now. Where is it, Ivan? It should be on the loop. Loop shaft assembly. Flywheel. I'm just going to have a look at how I... So I'm going to change... Uh-huh. I'm going to re-choose the line that I used for this plane. And I'm going to choose the pulley instead. And then I'm going to check how, how wide is the pulley? 13. So then I'm going to change the extrude feature, the offset to be 13. 
and now that went wrong uh, oh I have to add half of the width I have to add the whole width of the flywheel I think you see the pulley get uh, hammered by the flywheel yeah um I think let me guess, I have to add 20 in the offset. 33. Here we go. Here we go! And now, my friend Hannes3000, now this whole package should be... Um, like now everything, the length of the shafts, the positions of the belt and the pulley and the flywheel is controlled... Um, by your parameters? By this one parameter. So if I if I want them a little bit closer, I do uh, six hundred, and all of that should. Um, oh, oh yeah, that's nice. <laughs> Yo. Okay. Well, you know what time it is, my friend. No. Yo. I don't. Yeah. It's actually time for a short little break. Ooh. I mean, we need to get some air into this room, get uh, our energies pumped again. We're working on cranks right now, so we don't want to get too cranky, right? <laughs> 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 so you know what, chat, all the viewers, we are going to leave this stream live here. We're just going to take a short break and we, we will be back. So you just keep this up. Keep this open and we will be back soon. Thank you so much for all the help. It was so much fun. See you in a short while. Yeah.
back, everybody. Get a short break here, refill our energies. Now we're ready to start with our cat adventures. Again. Hope you're having a great day. We certainly are. And so, so good we played it twice. <laughs> so, we have received feedback from a lot of people, especially over at Discord, who wants to show us cool ideas. And we want to see your cool ideas. So, if you go and look in the description, we just posted a brand new link, which we want to try. Hannes, can you show um, the stream scene where, we, where we're sharing these kind of things? Just click on that. Oh, no, maybe you have something else on your computer now. Um, so if you go to the description, you will see a Dropbox file request and there you can submit uh, images to us. And here, perfect. So uh, please keep uh, this folder as clean as possible. Only engineering ideas, only visual sketches. Put your own credit into the image itself, not in the file name. And try to keep them like 700 pixels high, 600 pixels wide, PNG or JPEG. And um, uh, so no fan art or memes or anything. Just keep it focused on the designs. And uh, we will uh, check from the beginning all the suggestions coming in. Maybe later we need to filter somehow. But this is something we wanted to try because we heard a lot of people had a lot of great ideas. So send them our way and we'll, and we'll check on them. Yeah, an easy way for us to check out. We can plop them up in screen while we're in CAD. Yeah. Okay, where, welcome where, back everyone. Where were we? Where were we? We are just... Um, so basically in the grand scheme of things, I've started with the drivetrain. Um, and the drivetrain is fully parametric, which means that I can move around everything and all the components we made so far will move around with the drivetrain. So pretty soon, I think it's time to start to put some instruments in here. And I think that will be the stream objective for this afternoon stream. So maybe let's head over soon, not yet. Let's head over to our iPad for, and let's just, uh, so um, this stream, uh, I think I want to do, first of all, crank. And then I want to do kick drum, kick drum. I want to do snare and uh, maybe um, bass. So I'm going to keep on um, blocking like what we have on screen on here, but in the more serious uh, CAD things. And then we can start to see how the drums and the drivetrain is um, navigating the space together with the instruments. because. There's a mistake I did on the first machine. Um, when I built the first machine, we started with the frame. So we started with this um, component. And I was like, we're going to solve the instrument positions later. And that ended up being like really, really tricky. We had to kind of fight to get these instruments in place. And mechanically, it was very suboptimal. So learning from this mistake, I want to um, put the instruments in very early. Um, where is my design? So, okay. We have a gorgeous looking flywheel there. I think I want to keep it red. It's just too beautiful, isn't it? Isn't it? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> Sorry. I was typing. Okay. So let's start with putting a crank in. Um, and I see that this has not been constrained properly. Mm, how are you feeling today, Hannes? 3000. I'm so good. Thank you for asking. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I, I get amazed when I see you get so much done in a single day. I think about where we started today and where we're at right now. Almost and nothing of this existed this morning, actually. No, yeah. things is moving fast. 
So this is a new thing in Fusion. It waits for save. And I'm actually going to let it wait because I want to save this before moving on. It's the save music. Yes. <laughs> it's done. I'm happy when I only get to the second chord of the save music. It is something we talked about last week also. Just because the, 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 the projects up until here, ma Machine 1 and 2, were dredge, dredges, slogs, slow. This project might not have to be that super mega slow because it's a digital file. I hope the process is more efficient this time. Um, new component. Um, crank. Crank disk. <laughs> Enoch Daniels. This is the least clickbaity and most wholesome series on YouTube at the moment. <laughs> Love you, Enoch Daniels. Thank you. <laughs> Love that comment beyond belief. Uh, it's, it's, YouTube is incentivizing clickbait. It's just human psychology. Like, if you ever log into YouTube without being logged in and you see what YouTube recommend when they don't have you logged in, you start to fear for humanity, don't you? Yeah. It's the lowest demo denominator. It's a, it's our lowest urges. It's our lowest things. And for so many years, I was like, oh, YouTube algorithm is wrong. And I realized that, no, it's perfect. It's just, this is how human psychology <laughs> looks. And we're so happy to hear comments like this because we don't want to be, we don't want to scream like everyone else. When I started my first band, we were playing music box. We were played on rock and roll festivals with all the other rock band, and the l the low, the less loud, what is it called, the lower we played, the lower, vo the softer we played, mm. the more the audience listened. Yeah, it was amazing. We played next to DJ, so we we were playing like this, and you had <laughs> like in another beat <laughs> on the stage next to us, and we were like to the festival organizer, maybe you shouldn't have like a dance floor next to our concert, and they were like, yeah, everyone wants to party, and we were like playing our music boxes, and had thousand silent people in front of us listening. Yeah, that taught me a lesson, and this is what we want. This that's to what be. led us up to this moment. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Martin, no ranting, work, 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 work. Very happy to hear that comment. I mean, a fun way to different, if we talk, if we think about the YouTube algorithm, like an evolutionary survival of the fittest, mm -hmm. um, like maybe differentiating yourself is one strategy for, for survival. I don't know. But one way to differentiate you nowadays is to just not clickbait. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Everyone's like, what's this? <laughs> <laughs> they it's, don't scream at us. What is this? <laughs> it's very, very nice to hear that that's coming through. Okay, widthness of crank disc is 20 millimeters. Uh, diameter, radius will be 100. I'm just doing something here. Position will be exactly 30 millimeters from there. No, 20. So I have a worry. And my worry is that the crank needs to be... Maybe we should show this in the action cam. Oh, no, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cad the crank first, yeah. and then I'm going to show you. Yep. Um, because I think the crank needs to be very far away from the machine because I need I think my whole body needs to fit between the machine and the crank with the playing position that we're working on um, so there's the disc it needs to be a little bit bigger since we have show dimensions we can do it from here nice mm. I want to have I'm abandoning my design principles right now. I'm, I'm just hoping no one notices. <laughs> <laughs> and yet you pointed it out. <laughs> uh, yeah. It's too too self-aware. 
So let's just cut a little bit of a hole here. Boom. And let's make a crank handle a little bit quickly. New component. Crank handle. It's such a cliche, 103,000, but I have to tell it anyway. When I started like wanting to work, do music, I wanted to become a music producer. And I went to this record label and I produced other bands and I was like, I'm a producer. And I played all the demos of other bands that I produced. And they were like, yeah, it sounds good. Um, and they were like, oh, okay, yeah, it's, it sounds okay. Uh, Nice. And then I had like for fun at home, just like my random thing made like a song where I tried to copy Jan Tiersen, the composer of the Amelie from Montmartre soundtrack. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, by the way, I also made, like, I was a little embarrassed. Yeah, I also made like this song, like with the music box. It's, it's not really serious, but I thought it was fun to show you. I just played like my first demo and people came out of the offices like, what? what the hell is this? <laughs> like people were literally leaving their desks in this record label. What to is like, happening in here? <laughs> yeah. And I was like, oh no, this I made this in my kitchen. Blah, 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 blah. So the, the South Park cheesy, I think we learned something today. I didn't try to please anyone when, when like doing that song. I just did what I wanted to do and tried to have fun. And I was shocked like that, that thing had a thousand times the reaction from the other demos I, I, I played. And I thought the other demos was much more elaborate productions and much better. So the cliche is that sometimes when you just do what you, what you want to do and you don't try to fit in, for example, into the YouTube algorithm, um, people relate to you in, in, a, in a much deeper sense. So that's my cheesy. I'm ranting so much. It's because I'm in a good mood, Hannes yes, 3000. Yes, yes. That was today's poetry session with Martin. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now I'm gonna show you the issue with this crank. I've been, I've been thinking about this since we mirrored the machine, uh, and isolate all. So so if we check the blocked version. I'm supposed to stand here, right? And I'm supposed to play bass. And I'm going to show you in the um, action cam, we call it action cam, <laughs> and the sound is going to be much worse. So just bear, bear, bear with the sound. Uh, let's go over to that camera, see if the sound works. Is and the, let's see yeah. if we have, yeah. there we have some sound also. So, if I'm standing, can you see me? Yeah. If I'm standing um, left of the bass like this, and I have to crank with my right arm, the ergonomics of playing the bass is perfect. So, left hand is like a double played bass, you know, they play like that. But I can't crank like this. Are you seeing this? Like, if we put a crank here, this is not ergonomical anymore. And my hand goes into the base from behind. So I think we have to like extend the crank all the way out here. And I'm standing like behind the crankshaft, so like this. And the crank is over here. And that's adding like 40 centimeters on the crankshaft. So that was... That was it. <laughs> Woo! Thank you for that beautiful demonstration. So, and I don't like this. Um, I, I really don't like it, but I actually don't see another way around it. Um, so let's hope Fusion didn't crash and it didn't. So let's just look at how this will look. So if I am like, I'm going to measure myself, say 400. <laughs> <laughs> so let's add like the width of Martin. I should add that as a parameter. Look at this. 
this looks crazy, doesn't it? <laughs> so, but maybe we can excuse this if this is a removable part, for example, for transportation and stuff. Yeah. So maybe this part can be removable, but yeah. <clears throat> let's have it there for now. I don't like it, but let's have it there for now. <coughs> and you definitely need a hand crank. You have, you will have a foot pedal as well. Yeah, that's a good idea. Uh, that's a good question. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think to start a machine and stuff, I think to, to, to play tight, there will be no electric motor on this machine. So to play tight, I, I think I need a hand crank. Mm -hmm. Let's just check how wide we already are because we haven't actually fixed this at all. Um... Oh, we're only at 800, which means that we probably want to be... So how wide is the blocking machine? Oh yeah, the maximum width of our CNC machine is 110. And then we started to think that we could actually put it together and we could make the machine as wide as we wanted to. And now I, I want to fight for keeping it in so we can make one so we don't have to jo splice the two programming drums so let's see if 110 is comfortable uh, this is 110 because it's almost scraping the frame here look at that little clearance Ooh. i mean the 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 router can cut it yeah, we can do 110. So let's do, let's try our best to keep the, um, the drum 110. And then maybe that will be, because it, last week we talked about making like a full size vibraphone. And maybe that is not really going to happen. So, but we can see. Um... Where am I? I want to go to the programming wheel. Um, I thought we had that design open. Okay, let me find that. Prog drum. Oh, maybe I closed that file. So if any new viewers, if you want to show us your ideas, like a lot of people on Discord are having a lot of ideas we heard, there's a link in the description for a file request where you can submit your image files. And please uh, just read through the um, our um, wishes on how you deliver it with credit in the image and stuff. Yeah. Uh, and we will click through the images as often as possible. Yeah on the stream. Super excited to see what you have done. Yes. 842. I'm just going to copy that. Here's a trick, because I want this to be 110. And then what you can do when you measure it is that you can just click the distance and that should be copied to the clipboard. Um, wait, maybe this is going to suck completely. And now I added this feature. Oh, <laughs> wait, 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 800. Um, okay, so it's 42. One hundred, eleven hundred millimeters. Plus 42. That's n that was not a good trick, but anyway. Let's check if this is 110. Because if I'm right, we have to make the crank even longer. Yeah, this is 110. Wow, that drum is massive. And if you missed it this morning's stream, we are making a silent sync pulley machined straight in to the programming wheel. Mm. 
<laughs> I mean, that is pretty exciting stuff. Um, but I don't have you to tell you that. I should show you that because it's show, show business. business. <laughs> <laughs> And a lot of people have wondered why we're using um, this silent belt. And it's a simple reason. The it's, hint is in the name. It preys on noise. <laughs> <laughs> oh. We're having too much fun here. Is this legal? I don't know. Sue us. So now you can see that we need to add much longer here. Sue us for oh, having too much fun. Yep. Um, digi 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 digi. Uh, no, sorry. 195. We have to add like 20 centimeters till. Let's do 800 here for, for now. The crank is because I have to stand next to the programming wheel. Yeah, this, this is... This is an issue with my new placement. Like, how how long is this machine right now? <laughs> this is going to be two meters, Hannes. Woo! You love that. Two meters of fun. <laughs> <laughs> what? 170 centimeters is nothing. Ah. It's nothing. It's too small. It's way too small. Yep. And now I can also see like, okay, here's a big, big one for you. This crankshaft, the left one, this one right here. I want to move that a little bit to the left. If we've done it correctly, I only have to increase, decrease this value. And it will jump to the left. Will it jump? Oh, it jumps. We saw a jump, everyone. Beautifully. Woo! Let's decrease this a little bit more. And now this one is a little bit over exaggerated. Okay, so actually for now, I'm very happy with that. So if we go to the stream, if we go to the uh, sketch block. Oh yeah, let's see. Uh, I think we can actually make a little satisfying green check mark on this. So let's go over to the kick drum. Oh, that's what it said. <laughs> what? Can't you? Kick drum, snape. <laughs> kick drum. <laughs> um, yeah. So this is a completely new design phase. And I want to keep this Fusion design file, I want to keep for everything rotating and stuff. It's the drivetrain design file. So I want to start something completely new. Let's head over to the PBS. Uh, I do have a very early version of the PBS here. And let's see. Let's start. Oh, we don't have a... a Vibrato shaft yet. It doesn't matter. Let's start 0600 uh, um, drum kit assembly. What about that? You like it? Drum kit assembly, here we go. Because this is where things are getting a little bit more serious. So I think we're going to make... I wonder where it would make sense to CAD that maybe in the skeleton. Is it even a skeleton thing? So this is our skeleton design. So let's let's why why not? 
Let's put the kick drum into the skeleton. Is it in front or behind the crankshaft? I guess right in front, right? Yep. Yes. Okay, uh, in front and a little below. Maybe we should have the drums really low. Away from... That's a little shame on the... Hmm. Yeah, that's, that's what we're going to find out. In front of the shaft. Okay. So this is the first design of the whole project. Um, I mean, the, the, the master. Um, the master design. And yet again, we're going to take the same measurements because these were the measurements of a kick drum. 228 times 406. 228.5 times 406. Sorry. Um, here we go. What did we say? 228.5? Two twenty eight point five times four oh six. And what kind of angle do we want on the drum actually? What do you think? Don't interrupt me, I'm reading, okay? Ah oh, yeah, sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Simultaneous, uh, what is it? Multitask upgrade on Hannes 4000. Yeah, it needs to happen. I'm yeah. sluggish now. What is this? I need oh. to empty my my yeah. trash bin. Or what is it called? <laughs> I wonder when it's going to be released. So let's do a 20 degree tilt on that. And let's constrain the hit point. This is just going to be the center of the kick drum. Let's constrain it towards the floor. So I can actually, yeah, not lower than 60 from the floor. So 600. This is as low as it goes. And then maybe we should constrain it in relationship to the crank in. Uh, 20 centimeters in front of the crank. And I don't, I want only construction lines here. So on this sketch, I will put in like big master like things seen from the side. So now when I create a brand new design and I call this, um, what did we say? 06, 06, yeah. Drum kit assembly. Um, I won't import this design. I want to derive it in. And this is because all the global commands then comes with us. So you go to this design and you go on create. And there you go on derive. Oh, I have to save. Okay. And in derive, you have to first select what you want to derive. I want to derive this, but I also want to derive all the favorite parameters. And we do not want to derive it into a new design. We want to drive it straight into an existing design. So let's hit OK and let's now choose the drum kit assembly. Woo! <laughs> so now the timeline of the drum kit assembly is beginning with uh, with a, a feature where we have derived this thing. And the magic this causes is that in the parameters, we can now go and fetch the parameters from the skeleton. Oof. So I have the global parameters at a fingertip if I need them in all my in all my sketches. Ow. Ow. I just hope Fusion is not breaking down this or, or something like that. So yeah, we'll see about that. New component, um, 06, 01, kick drum.
and then I'm going to offset a plane from the origin I guess 300 and that's going to be the way we control the sideways uh, position of the kick drum and then I want to create a sketch here then I'm going to project with a link the rectangle we made in the skeleton uh, design right here so this projection link option is really really useful sometimes you want a link sometimes you don't want it if you use it too often your timeline breaks if you forget to use it your timeline doesn't become parametric so it's, it's a good one to keep your eyes firmly on and here we go to the favorite way to make cylinders nowadays it's the new craze the revolve feature Oof. everything is revolving around this future Whoa. nowadays <laughs> <laughs> um, there we go so I have heard that snare drums are also really popular so let's let's have one on the Marble Machine 3. Mm, 0602 Snare Drum. Snare Drums. Hip with the kids. <laughs> <laughs> what is chat saying? Hope everyone is having a nice time. Hope you're doing fine. A lot of people are listening to us in your workshops. So have fun in your workshops and uh, greetings to all of you working while while keeping us company here. Yes. Something that I've been going on about is that when you want your uh, designs to be parametric, think about what kind of relationship you want stuff to have. So I want that. I know that the snare drum is always going to be next to the kick drum. So now when I make my offset plane, I don't offset it from the origin. No, I offset it from the center of the kick drum. So I choose the kick drum plane as an offset reference. And then I can just, when I drag this arrow, then I'm just defining how far apart the drums are. So I'm just gonna do 600 here, which means that if I move the kick drum, the snare drum will move in unison. Um, it's taking me like so long to kind of get these kind of things into my backbone and it's still actually still not really there um, but it's um, let me just make sure that I'm projecting the correct lines here so also when you have a lot of I want to project from the CAD skeleton I don't want to project from the kick drum like this Mike Perry suggests that we should absolutely get some Wayne Gretzky jerseys that would be awesome <laughs> I recognize that name from yesterday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mike Perry has been an all-star already here, helping us. Hall of Fame Gretzky right there. <laughs> Wasn't it Mike who helped with... Um... Something in Fusion. Yes. Um... Oh, but that was like the best thing, and I forgot it already. Kungen of Ost, having you in the background makes me ten times as productive as usual. It's magical. Wow. And That's Linux user 99 doing my systems admin while working. Uh, doing my systems admin work while listening. Martin's voice is very soothing. Ooh. Take that. That's happy because my, vo my voice has been called a goat voice. And I have little voice envy for Hannes 3000's uh, <laughs> very low and soothing voice. So happy to hear that. <laughs> We do a trick. Oh, I, here we go. Mike Perry, Helical Gears. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mike found out the software too that we created the Helical Gears with. And they're already out. You've already been angle grinded out of this project, Mike. <laughs> Wear your scars like a crown. Um, let me quickly check the snare uh, sizes here. 140 times 178. Um, where am I? I'm in drum. No. Drum kit assembly. Here we go. Oh, 140. I guessed it. What was the other one? 178? Probably. Yeah. 
Andrew Bailey, working with live stream in the background makes you feel like you're not working alone. Now that's beautiful. Oh, that's wonderful. So I'm going to revolve the snare drum here. And Mike Perry fills in pain is temporary, glory is forever. He cashed a drift immediately. <laughs> <laughs> you had 24 hours with the helical gears. So a lot of people are wondering like why we um, went from the, from the helical gears to these silent sync timing belts. And uh, because... It prays on the noise. <laughs> so... Um, that's the that's the sole reason right there yep it's in the name it says everything i think these drums are too far apart so then i can go into the timeline and i can edit this plane feature and this is how i control the sideways position of the snare drum so let's do like 400 let's just move this around a little bit more 410 mm, still 420 420 perfect and now I can just show you what I was going on about is that if I want to move the drums like this 500 they move in a group now uh, whip 8 is wondering here once the CAD is done do all the parts get made by other makers before assembly yes I'm not going to lift a finger. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, we are... Um, I want to design this with no manual bending, nothing. I want this to be able to be ordered from a couple of trusted suppliers and like assembled by who, whomever. We are in a discussion with grandgarage.eu uh, to maybe move my CNC machine and my workshop to Linz in Austria. So if there's a lot of people from Austria in Linz who are um, interested in being part of the engineering team who's just assembling the marble machine there, um, let us know in the chat. Because it's not decided yet if we're going to go there. But Rudy, a fantastic engineer uh, who lives there and is a member of the... Uh, Grand Garage is a makerspace with 40 full-time employees. And I just feel moving my workshop to a makerspace where there's a lot of people, makes so much more sense than having it in the forest somewhere. Um, so right now the plan is that the Marble Machine 3 is going to be assembled in Linz, Austria, but subject to change. Um, I, hope, I hope that falls into place, though. Do we have a main assembly yet? No. So let's create... Let's create the new... Um, main design file Ooh. for the third time in four days yeah still history every time <laughs> <laughs> machine three i don't know i want to exclude the word marble all the time it's like i feel stupid for building a marble so it's it's like i'd rather call it just machine yeah martin machine three <laughs> So I can take the drivetrain assembly, I insert that, and I can take the drum kit assembly, and I insert that, and now we can start to look at uh, the relationships here. And we can see that the drums are, of course, at a completely wrong place. So let's move them over to the left. Uh, and we're going to do that in the drum assembly file. And we do that by editing this feature. Minus 200. Save. And now we have this, which is a new thing in Fusion 360. And then the pause music comes. Oh, yes. How are you all doing out there this beautiful Monday? Hope you're sitting back, relaxing, while Martin is designing a new, hopefully, functional 
Marble Machine. Welcome to the Fusion Saving Screen. Oh wow. Let's head over and see what's happening. Well, we're still saving everyone. How are you doing out there, chat? Where are you watching this from? Do we have people from all around the world? We're waiting for the program to save if for any new viewers. <laughs> yeah, we're not procrastination. <laughs> Procrastinating. This is the save screen, okay. We should have like a scene uh, where we can share this. Where we can... Oh, maybe we should have... It. Wait, I'm gonna make it. You're gonna make it. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna make it. You go and make stuff. Yeah, I, I have the perfect scene, okay? Um... Let's duplicate this. <laughs> <laughs> Zoom. Waiting screen. This is going to be beautiful. Because this is something new with Fusion. I don't understand what it's it's doing. Um, Here we see we have people from Seattle, Wyoming, Germany, Italy, Stuttgart. And John Alveus is he loves the overnight radio DJ vibe. Oh wow, here comes people from everywhere. I see a player's handbook. You guys playing D and D? Peter Christiansen. Well, <laughs> so I have my first. I'm gonna base my character on a crystal that I received. I was in a lonely forest the other day, and all of a sudden I received this crystal. And my character is going to be based on that. I, I never made a character before, so I don't know how to do it. We have people from Norway, Poland. We have en svensk Argentina, France, Russia, America, Umeå, Sweden, Finland. That's fantastic. And wow. The reason we're uh, stalling is because we're waiting for the program to save. And if you come back to my screen, I have prepared a waiting screen for the next time. This <laughs> <laughs> no, fully it, functional save screen. There we go. It allowed us to. Um, it allowed me to to save. So uh, next time we're gonna have a beautiful waiting uh, bar to, to the music. I think that will make sense. Okay. Let's get back to the placement of these drums. So far, this has been pretty easy. I think now is where the the hard part begins, where we have to start to actually see how much slash little space we have for stuff. Are we venturing into Mordor right now? <laughs> yes. Alexander Larsson. Hey, Trollhättan. So we have a, have someone from Trollhättan watching. Oh, that we we used to be there before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Our old battlegrounds there. Trollhättan. Norrlänning borttappad i södern. Nikolas Ångnell. Waiting for Fusion to save. <laughs> Always. Still. Wait, I'm gonna try my new screen. <laughs> Wait for it. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. right now I think We're it's crashed. getting there do you see a beach ball <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I'm I don't, I'm not happy about this oh there's the there's the ball call us the represent we have here as well oh compute finished there we go everyone Karlstad Karlstad Uvagött. Det bästa, vet du vad det bästa med Tingvalla gymnasiet i Karlstad är? Uh -huh. är så himla centralt. Och så ligger det nära stan också. <laughs> Briljant. Jo. Som en gammal sunsta i levet så hade vi mycket skämt om Tingvalla eleverna. Så vi, jag hoppas att du inte är gammal Tingvalla elev. Det kanske du är. Det går bra också. We can, we can laugh about it now. Ehm... <laughs> um, 
Okay, drums have been moved. And uh, things are heating up. I just want to say thank you, Slice of Sparta, for sending those warm words to me. He, he, he gives me cred for my job on the streams here. You're absolutely invaluable. <laughs> <laughs> you, Someone offered $55 the other day, and, and I was like, no, there's no price. <laughs> <laughs> and here we have Lance also. The greatest addition to the mold machine is Hannes 2000. Well... Thank you, Lance. That was my name. <laughs> that was my name. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what I'm thinking about now, um, everything is saved. Good, that was a little intermission. So what I'm thinking about now is these really cool uh, drum beaters here that is going to be controlled by the loop machine. This is going to blow people's minds. Oof. This is going to be eight times tighter than the marble was playing on the Marble Machine X because this drum is moving eight times faster than the programming wheel which with the same diameter which gives the timing resolution is going to be eight times better and since the flywheel is going to be monstrous uh, the timing resolution of the machine should be better anyway so I'm counting on that these drum beaters are going to be like I am counting on this. So, now I'm going to navigate um, because they have a special muting function and the thing I'm thinking about now is if they should be on top or below the crankshaft. So that's kind of an early, very big decision. Um, we can kind of see it here. Or maybe better in the in the full assembly. Um, so right now it seems like they should be completely below, right? It doesn't make sense to have them above here. The only thing with that, it the way they're gonna be muted. Let, let me actually show that because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. that's important for context and gives me some time to think. Um, the way these are muted is by pivot the whole assembly all on this pivot point right here. If Fusion allows me to. Oh. Hmm. This is my least favorite thing when Fusion is sluggish. Is there any magical way we can get it to fasten up a bit? Yeah, not not use the... I think I have a little bit too many designs open, perhaps. Mm -hmm. Read some nice chats while we're waiting for this. Now I think it really crashed, actually. Silas Floor. I am learning mm -hmm. animation for a study assignment. It is very time-consuming work, but following your journey of learning to engineer makes me feel like I can do this. Thank you both. <laughs> Makes you feel like you're learning really fast, doesn't it, in comparison? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, and Wyatt Bailey says, the two of you do make a really good duo. It's oh. really nice seeing you bounce off each other. It's so much fun. It's So for some reason, I can't show you this. The whole thing is pivoting backwards. Um, let's not crash Fusion with that. So that makes me a little scared that this shaft is then going to be in the way for the muting function. That's what scares me a little bit with putting the whole thing under. It's okay. I'm right there next to you. I don't <laughs> need to be scared. So slice of Sparta yet again with the positivity here. Martin with the engineering, Hannes with the positivity and stream expertise. This will be the best model machine yet. So excited to watch this journey. Thank you, Splice of Sparta. You're wonderful. Yes. Let's try to figure out what kind of space we have here. So I'm going to just... 
Okay, something is wrong with the fusion now. Um, I apologize for this. It feels like it wants me to restart. I'm going to save and restart everyone. Brandon Mussin also says that not with all these components, but you might be able to change the settings so that it doesn't regenerate all of the parts every time one changes. Yeah, that could, that could be something to look into. Just going to go through and close some stuff here. This is where we uh, started the day, actually. And <laughs> wow. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> And uh, with all the gears that we have removed uh, by by using the timing belts instead. Why does this want to upgrade? Okay, I just have to go through and uh, do some fusion maintenance here to get things to work with me. <laughs> Computing <laughs> sweep. Here we go. I love my new... This is my favorite uh, scene we have. Myself. I'm glad you guys made a good choice in using belts instead of the gears because you made the best choice with belts. I will leave with the I will leave you with this saying getting too easy. And Jimmy married Krog. Once you think the whole Marvel Machine series is over, it's not. Thank you. <laughs> That's wonderful. Great reading and great comments. That design. And I started the second uh, part of the song as well. Uh, so we, we I found a new part of the waiting song for the long waiting times. <laughs> <laughs> so now I can close this down. So I'm, I was really insecure about the belt choice. And like Rosero picked into the chat this morning, like the first comment saying that uh, Rosero thought it was like a good idea. And now we get what sounds like more like experienced engineers um, chiming in, liking the belts. That, yeah. that makes me happy. When Rockstar Rosero chimes in, <laughs> your ear listens closely. Yeah. We have a what would Rosero do sign here. I can show, <laughs> show it right now because it's out of frame, but it's, <laughs> it's there. <laughs> Oh, compute finished. Woo. Jerowen Blomshear, season three of Marble Machine Dragon Slaying. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> when are the dragons coming? <laughs> We're slaying them. As soon as they appear, we just, yeah. Okay, let's close the CNC machine. Let's close this one. This one is a big, I'm going to close this. Don't save. Yeah, so apologies for a little hi hiatus in the productivity. I had to... Fusion is not allowing me to draw a single sketch line at the moment. And I can't really, I can't really work under those circumstances. So oh. I'm trying to get Fusion a little bit happier. Um, and let's see if we have achieved that now. Yes, here we go can draw a sketch line now we are back in business here we go yep so what i want to figure out here is uh the muting of these um uh drum things 
So the way I want this to work is that there will be um, triangles on top of this um, that will play the notes of the loop machine and they will be programmable. So think of these triangles as large programming pins and they will uh, rotate I'm going to show you the rotation direction clockwise and they will rotate like this. So the drum sticks are going to be placed. This is an idea I've stolen from Florian, the designer that I worked on uh, the secret project with. Um, who's an amazing mechanical designer. So the drumsticks themselves will pivot on a pivot point, let's say here. Um, like this. Let me add like a head to the drumstick so it feels cooler. And then uh, there's a reader here that uh, registrates the, the programming, what is it called? Programming triangles. So this, and it will be springs and stuff. We can omit them for now because I just want to see the clearance here. Um, but the way we're muting these things is that we're rotating it on another pivot point. We're rotating the whole assembly, for example, on this pivot point here. So let me just like pick these, choose these and show you what I mean. So If I move this on this pivot point, this mechan this whole mechanical assembly will move like this. And this is when it's not played. So you can see that the registrator here is leaving the programming triangle, mm. causing, causing the programming triangle to uh, not interact at all with this channel. And here is my point. We have gone straight through this shaft here. So it all depends on how, where we put this pivot point. No, actually not. It just depends on the travel. So so depending on how much we want to, thinking if there is some smart way to do this. Oh wait, if the reader is super long, okay, I'm figuring something out here. We saw it happen live. <laughs> oh, the pivot point. Okay, so what, we don't want this to move, actually. So what if we move the pivot point over here? Okay, I'm just thinking freely here. I'm just choosing these now. Move. Look at that. Ooh. Look at that. So now the drum, oh, this is going to look so magical. So basically by moving the pivot point into a place where we don't want it actually. <laughs> <laughs> but what I mean here is that a fewer degrees, can we do it underneath? No, that would. So now what I mean now is that this drumstick is not interfering with this shaft. You see what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we can decouple. We could probably like have the drumstick not move at all. That would be so magical. Like I don't want this to be here. But check this out. If we put a pivot point here. This is of the muting mechanism, not of the mechanical mechanism. Um, 
If you're a little bit confused right now, I understand that because it's not here. But if we put it here, then the drum stick is almost not moving at all. It's going into the drum there and it's not so good. That's very interesting. Of course, this is exactly where we don't, where we probably don't want it to be. So I'm going to try to solve this by, by, while having the drumstick under here. So let's give us some more room by actually lowering the drums. 550, only 55 centimeters above ground. It's quite low, thinking of that we have to collect the marbles. No, it's probably okay. And then maybe we can put them a little bit more forward. Is that helpful or is that maybe... Maybe that's not helpful. Put them backwards. But of course we can't have this pivot point here where the marbles should fall and everything. So that was a little pie, pie in the sky. <laughs> but what happens if we put it really close? What happens if we put it here? So sometimes it really helps like checking things in CAD like this rather than thinking you know what will happen. <laughs> <laughs> because you do stupid assumptions. Look at this point. This is not bad. Like right above the... Wait. Wait here one moment. Does that mean we can use the crankshaft for this pivot point? <laughs> <laughs> I played it wrong, didn't I? <laughs> what? Well, how is it as it go? Is it that way? Almost. It's not. <sighs> Almost. We're I'm getting sorry, there. everyone. The truth is out there. <laughs> Does this mean that we can put this on the same shaft? Huh. How wonderful would that be? How wonderful would that be? It needs to be... I'm very surprised by this. Uh, move. Around this pivot point. Have a look at that. Helge Stuart Bergstad pivot it on the crank axle. Yeah, Helge Gretzky. Gretzky. Gretzky confirmed. Skating where the puck is going. <laughs> I love all the Gretzkys out there. You have officially, Helge, uh, been chosen into the Gretzky Hall of Fame. That would be so nice. Yeah, sometimes, sometimes it leads to more issues. And for example, if we if we want, so if I if I want a lesser, so what I what I can do now, if I want a lesser angular uh, rotation, I can just move this like the registrators far down like this. Because look what happens now. If I move these same things uh, over the same pivot point, um, it just it travels much further. The the registrator down here travels much further. It travels into the kick drum, which oh, is an issue. <laughs> that's a big issue. That is a big issue. Um, it's a very interesting idea. A very interesting idea, actually. Um, wow, let's head over to our physical model a little quick. Um, I not there here because I was worried about this thing, mm -hmm. but that thing can be um, that thing can be moved. Yeah, let's do that. Let's use this shaft. Then everything so the shaft will be spinning. 
insights are oh this is beautiful oh yeah i saw a smile on martin's yeah. face yeah yeah yeah. i love this, this i love this uh, this is going in the right direction putting putting excluding parts like do we need an empty axle there for nothing no let's put it to use excluding parts that the, that's the name of the game <laughs> <laughs> that's absolutely the name of the game um oh this is fantastic let's try this um which design file uh, not the drum kit assembly we want to go to the drivetrain assembly and we want to push this we want to go to the master sketch um so right here and our mirroring line here that controls these distances is going to move over to the other side of this. Uh, I released it at exactly the wrong place. We put it over there. Now you can see that these things have moved over. And I'm going to constrain this again so everything turns black. Okay, this feels kind of exciting Hannes 3000 Oof, I'm shaking here in my chair <laughs> this ex ex excitement in the air I mean the fewer this is like form from function the fewer like Ale Alex CNC from the wonderful YouTube channel Alex CNC just finished a home built concrete base a CNC machine with high precision he said and I asked if I could quote him on this. On the first machine, you try the idea. On the second machine, you learned engineering. On the third machine, you'll get it right. Boom. Alex CNC. And on the second machine, I was so in love with all the possibilities of CAD and engineering. I had never tried CAD before, so I was like, oh, let's do this, let's do that. And now I'm like, every part we can remove, the best part is no part, less dumb design requirement, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Uh, this is so, so cool. Um, where's the drums? Uh, it's going to update this file. Exactly like Jerome Blomshear says, best part is no part. John Alveus, Hannes, Martin is getting artistic. Only you can stop him. Discord, I have not seen any uploads yet to the new Dropbox folder here. As soon as there is something to show, I will show it for Martin. Mr. B Fox 1775 put the drumsticks underneath and the marbles hit on top. And Robert M. Stahl just says meow. Um, we talked, the underneath idea is super uh, creative. Um, I think it, we talked about it in a stream actually. Um, Love the outside of the box thinking, but I would, first of all, it's easier to get the correct sound uh, when uh, the drumsticks are hitting the drums on the correct side. And I want to see this drumstick action. Um, so for example, a snare drum is not meant at all to be hit on the other side. Um, and I want to hit the drums on all the same sides. Okay, where do we start to work on this? Um, 
let's go to our um, let's go to our um, to do list. I had time. Yeah. So please write kick drum now. I can't see what it says. It, I, I only I need to be able to read this. The whole uh, chat is confused what you're writing. Um, the bass. <laughs> <laughs> So I want to add something that I want to I want to CAD. I want to also CAD um, drum beaters. Let's get the bass in there since we since we decided to do that and then go to this super exciting idea of using the crankshaft as pivot point for the drum beaters muting function. And this this gets me going. Actually, I also want to do pretty soon like um Contact set. Contact sets in fusion is when a physical body will automatically move another body. And these kinds of designs, I'm definitely going to design a nice contact set, which means that I will spin this drum and you will see how the programming thing will affect the drum thing and then also the muting. So we can it's it's kind of a low tech physics simulation. But before we do that, let's do a bass guitar. I just have something here from Mark Niederman. Hannes 3000, tell Martin the notes are C, D, E, G, E, G in the C major scale arpeggio. C, D, E. C, D, E, G, E, G. Is that some kind of meme song or something? I don't know. C, D, E, G. Drum kit assembly. I'm gonna add the bass into the drum kit assembly. That makes sense, right? Zero six O oh, three bass. How can I do this? How can I do this? Um How do I do this actually? Um, an offset plane of the kick drum plane. And then that becomes the middle of the base. Okay, that's fine. Minus 480. So everything is uh, all fun and games when you have uh, like one hundredth of the parts you need to fit in. <laughs> so I feel like now we start kind of looking at the real uh, issues. So I'm putting the angle for the bass guitar here. Let's do 15. And this line is just here to... Um, make a plane for the bass guitar sketch. So here I will control the depth of the bass, um, pos the position, not the depth of the bass itself. A little bit more in front perhaps. And then we go up into the very useful plane at angle and I project this plane on this sketch line I just created. So whenever you need like to do a sketch in a strange place in Fusion, make a sketch line where you want it and uh, use plane at angle on that sketch line. Because then it's easy to, um, to keep your designs parametric. I'm gonna project this middle line and I'm gonna going to draw only half of the base and then we're going to uh, mirror it. So this is obviously uh oh chat can you find like um the length of a of a hollow body acoustic base? I that would be fantastic. The length uh, or uh, <laughs> from bottom to top and the width of the body. I think it was the X Files theme they were talking about. <laughs> ah, CD. What did they say then? Uh, uh, oh wait, well, no, I know, I know, I know it. I, oh, what the? I 
I've really forgot it. I have a small little issue here. I'm sorry to bother you with this, Martin, but the whole the Dropbox situation we set up. Uh, perhaps we have some admission, uh, permission problems or something. I can't. Uh, oh, the folder is not shared with you. I think that can be the problem. People are uploading, but I can't find anything. Okay, let's fix that. <laughs> Look at my face. <laughs> Should we do that right now? Yeah, you can check your your computer, perhaps. So, so you don't see any files in the folder? No. Or can you click? Um, because that's not the fold. I made another folder in there. Yeah, I can't find it. Huh. 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 Now, what you have? You you actually have um, check in sync if you have synced the folder. Because you do have full permissions on that one, I think. You think so, do you? Can we go back to CAD just um, uh, temporarily? So this is nice when you have uh, this assigned mirror. You can you can do this. So I love the picture of the. I I, I want like a base like this. So like a hollow body, vintage base kind of thing. Okay. Let's import the base here and see how, how we're doing space wise. Yeah. So the base is colliding with the uh, crankshaft right now. Oh, maybe the shaft is going to be in front of the base. Would that solve everything? If we do... Oh, that's kind of... That's kind of crazy. Maybe... Oh, it's going into the programming wheel. No, probably not then. Okay, right behind the base. So let me just push the base forward. Uh, 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 uh. And my favorite trick, show dimensions, which means that the, the um, dimensions of your sketch is showing in this view and you can just manipulate it without going into the sketch itself. Did you find some more folders to sync or? No, I think you may have sent it to the, to the wrong email address for me. That ah. might be it. Because it said five people. Um, but it's so strange you saw the first folder. That's what's... Um, that what's um, make me surprised. Now here we should see the base moving forward. So this is an issue, like the bass and the kick drum colliding here. It's it's an annoying thing. Um, maybe the height would have been better there. God, these drums are big. Maybe we don't. Maybe we can go down to jazz jazz sized kick drum. Or maybe it will always sound like pong 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 pong, <laughs> goong goong. I want, you know, like you slap a steak on wet asphalt. Is the <laughs> <laughs> that's the kick drum sound we want on the Marble Machine Three? Uh, meanwhile, do we have any measurements for the bass guitar? Measurements for bass guitar. Or should should we go six hundred twenty-eight millimeters? I just see it's a random number here. 
that should be the width then. No, 628. Because I think this body looks too wide. So if you're new, welcome. We have found out something very exciting. We're not on that right yet. Um, because I just wanted to put the bass guitar in. But we have found out that the muting mechanism of the drum beaters can reuse the crankshaft uh, position as a pivot point. Which actually have the wondrous wonderful effect that the registrator and these beaters are moving in a very advantaged way when being muted, namely like this. And whenever you can omit a whole shaft, a whole uh, pivot position, it's, it's great news. So this is the thesis right now anyway. But I'm hearing at Hannes3000 wants me to solve this issue and probably some of the CAD people all as well. So we're going to go and fix that. So bear with us while we're fixing this. Problem easy to fix. It's just a permission thing. You think? Yeah, I think so. I can't find it anywhere. So uh, let me have a quick look. Um... So, let me see here. So we have today, if you go to the description, you will see there is a new upload link for people who want to send images of their ideas. And um, let me just see how this one is shared. It's in a shared folder. Well, like it, it is in our shared folder. So you see the image suggestions yeah, folder? It. There, it's empty. And this one? Yeah, and that's empty as well. Okay, that's empty for me as well. That gives us a good... Um, and I also uploaded just to test it and it didn't, <laughs> it didn't work. Okay, so no, so the upload link is not coming through. Let me go and check the file request. Here it says five submitters, eight files. Where is that folder then? Edit. MM3 image ideas. Yeah, so can't find it. I put this folder in the wrong location then. Sorry, everyone. This is something to expect when we are live. In file requests. So it, it created, um, okay, I'm sharing this with your uh, Dropbox email. Yeah, thank you. Perhaps I can see it then. Yeah, I'm sharing it now. Yeah, my bad. Yeah. Uh, I create the Dropbox file requests are great, but I, I created, uh, now you should have an email, Hannes. Yeah, I will check it out. Yeah. Okay. So let's go back to CAD. Can we actually go to the um, to the to-do list? Because we can do that. We have made this one. And now let's start on some drum beaters um, programming because this is actually kind of exciting. I think I'm going to do it in this file. And we had, we start almost all our files by deriving the skeleton. So you can see here, the first feature is derive the skeleton. So if I show that, we will have these things that I, that I just sketched here. So let's make let's make something cool. Let's make 
0604. Um, what should I call this? It's it's the drum beater muting mechanism. Drum beater. Um, drum beater contact set. I'm actually going to just create some physical bodies and make them into a contact set to like test the movement. So this is more. Um, I'm not really cutting the the final function. I'm more cutting like um, checking out if this mechanical idea checks out. Uh, so hide this. And let's create the first drum beater in center of the kick drum. So we're gonna steal the kick drum plane and I'm gonna project this magical pivot point from the general thing. I'm also gonna project the surface of the loop drum. Maybe this point as well. There we go. So when you make contact sets, um, you want to have several bodies uh, to to rotate. This is like, like I said before, this is like a physics simulation, like light, low resolution physics simulation. Uh, so I'm gonna make this mechanical thing behave as it kind of would in real life. So I need separate bodies around everything. And as I said, this is uh, mainly blocking. This is only blocking, actually. This is no... Um, let me hide this. What is this here? I'm starting to pull things up here on screen from Discord. Okay, so that will be the wrong gear ratio. The one belt system? Yeah, you will have 1 to 8 to the programming wheel and we need 1 to 64. But very nice sketch. When I unlink. How many do we have? Just a couple more. Okay. Uh, rotating rod, better arm. When the... Uh, I don't understand it I don't know what it is unlink beater and reader arms oh it's for um, when the unlink rod is pulled only the reader arms move I would love to understand what this is so can you send it again and like in context because I don't really, s maybe I'm slow, but I don't, I don't know where in the machine we are. Oh, beautiful. If you make the programming drum hubless, then you can utilize the space inside the drum, get access to it without having to go through the hub. The guide wheels can be located anywhere around the drum. So you'd create a floating effect as well if you wanted to increase the wheel size to reduce friction use needle roller bearings as well idea by Dennis has cool idea uh, really cool idea um, that's the kind of thing like I'm, I'm, I'm going to write it down it's the kind of thing that has to solve a lot of problems to be worth it um Hubless uh, drums possible. Um, so super cool idea. Th this had not crossed my mind. MMX Tower. <laughs> Beautiful. Can you see what it says? Off the shelf parts. 
more channels in small footprint, freedom to position instruments everywhere, horizontal flywheel, stabilizes machine. Oh yeah, there was they were into this off the shelf one to sixty four planetary gearbox. Um off the shelf clutch. Also everything is Oh, it's the other way around. That's cool. That is really cool. Okay, super nice outside, like, challenging a lot of design assumption ideas. And I'm not 100% sure about all this, but it's really nice. It's beautiful. We can have them on screen now. We can just watch them. Wow, the other way around. <laughs> Putting you. everything the other way around. Got you going, right? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Super cool. Um, what is this for machinery? These are music boxes, I think. Is this music boxes? Yeah, some kind of rolling papers. So, like, the more you can explain the idea uh, when you submit images, like, w what we are looking at, so you can see, like, at a moment's notice, the better. Because it's a little hard to see... Um, what this suggestion also refers to. So it's hard to see the context. But thank you so much. That was the first batch. It was an amazing batch. So thank everyone for, for sending those in. Um, and if I didn't get it, it's it's on me. But if you can make it like super easy to get right away, that's fantastic. Wow. Hubless and, and other the way tower. around. <laughs> the tower. The <laughs> tower. Um, so I'm going to put a program triangle here so now we're actually getting into like more of the, the real it's so much fun to look at those sketches um, so keep them coming 140. So let's say that these triangles are. I want them to be pretty high. 80. So I also need a little uh, pivot thing here for the contact set later. Symmetrical, boom. And I want to make this disk. Let's do 20, symmetrical. Like this. So this is the loop machine thingy. Let's keep on going with the drumstick. I'm going to CAD this a little bit nicer. So I'm going to find the middle of the drum here. Why didn't it take the parallel? So as I said before, these beaters are going to be eight times tighter, if my calculations are correct, than the marbles were playing on the Marble Machine X. And the marbles were within milliseconds tight. Oof. So I'm, I'm, I'm excited for this. And I'm going to be able to play this like a DJ. There will be like five tracks for the snare, five tracks for the kick. And I can like have things going in and out and yeah that's going to be cool hopefully marble machine x tower <laughs> it, it stuck with you right <laughs> it did the tower off the shelf gearbox. It's actually um, that's pretty. Uh, that's pretty cool. 
I don't have much torque needed in those things. So in my gear train, we have leverage on our on our side always. Um, but basically, if you're gearing down, you should always it should be the same. So that gearbox should probably act and feel the same. Here's the drumstick, and it's going to go up to here. No, the drumstick is not going up to here. So that's the that's the cool thing with this idea. Uh, the drumstick is pivoting on its own pivot over here. 20. So let's do something like this. So welcome to everyone joining us. We had a fantastic day actually so far. Uh, been a little bit everywhere, but most of all, what we really have done is that we have gotten far on the drivetrain. And especially we have uh, found a nice product with this herringbone timing belts. And as Hannes used to say, It preys on noise. It preys on noise, okay? So uh, I want the Mar Machine 3 to be silent, and uh, this this seems to be a, a very good step. And silent, why? Well, it needs to sound good acoustically. Yes. So it's a, it's a step in the good direction. Um, let me offset this. Eight. And offset this. What I'm doing now is that I'm going to create a contact set, which is um, like a low resolution uh, physical simulation, you could say. That's probably being way too generous. Um, but with contact set, you, you can get stuff um, to act to interfere each other, bodies interfere with each other in Fusion 360. And this also helps me like check my my idea and check if I'm uh, check if I'm right with how I think things will move. So on these registrators, I'm thinking about having something rolling. Like instead of sliding towards the triangles, I'm thinking of having like a bearing or something. I'm a little bit nervous these will make sound on the big hollow drum. We might have to like fill the drum with pillows or something. <laughs> That's what you do, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um... So let's just give this a little thickness, six, offset this minus six. Um, so let's check the travel here. Right, this now is 45, which means it will travel um, like 3.5 centimeters when being hit by an 8 centimeter high triangle. So let's push this in closer. 20. <laughs> Don't mind. Just put the library in there. It can't make sound then. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Everything yes. in my life has led up to this moment. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that, um... Mike Perry, when the marble machine is completed and working, will it be nicknamed the Great One? Not if, when. <laughs> 
for all the all those Gretzkis out there. It's a great name. I didn't even I didn't even catch the reference. Okay, so I Gretzky made Gretzky is the great one. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know that. I made a <laughs> I made a mistake here because uh, this distance actually between let's keep that. No, let's not. We need when the beater is going to hit the drum skin, it needs to be able to travel um, so let's do six millimeter. No, let's do ten millimeters. Six millimeters is not clearance. Ten millimeters here, which means this distance between the uh, here must be longer, because it needs to not bump into the um, to the side of the drum after being released. So let's try this, and I'm going to extrude this first. So you are, and so we can create the contact set for, um, for the drum beater itself first, and then I'm gonna show you the contact set for the muting mechanism, if I'm thinking correctly. Uh, here we go. One side symmetric. Here we go. And then I'm going to extrude the little drum beater. 20 symmetric full length not join new body let me see if I have to make things rigid first um, create where are the contact sets I forgot where the contact sets are. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Anyone fast in chat? Which menu is the contact sets? Well, you just have to wait like 30 Here. seconds and we will get it. <laughs> Enable contact sets. <laughs> contact, yeah, enable. I had to enable them here and here we go. I'm, I'm just heading out for a quickie here, Martin. Yep. Be right back. New contact set. This body with this. Bodies or components. Yeah, they have to be different components. Sorry for this. I can't have the bodies uh, so quick way to create components from your bodies. This is not so nice CAD wise, but it's just here, create components from bodies. So, um, and I think I should make some Revolut uh, joints as well before doing this, but I can just show you. So new contact set, and I'm going to show, use this one with this one. Now, if we, Turn this around this axis. Nothing is happening. What did I do? I did something wrong. Um, there we go. And now you can see that. So now you can see when I turn this, it does push the other part away. So if I undo that, you saw it was pushed away which means that we have to tell that this is uh, have a revolute joint on on this thing um, because we want it to pivot. So we go to, um, I think, just a normal joint. I'm going to say that you are jointed on... Does it need to start? And oh, that's annoying. Can I just... Like this, and type of joint is Revolut, so it makes this nice animation here, uh, and that's good. So now you should be able to see that when I spin this wheel, um, the thing is pivoting, it's not just being pushed away. Um, 
doing something. Ah, oh, move object faces components. That's of course what I'm doing wrong. Uh, select this component. So let's adore this beautiful mechanical movement from the side. Uh, and it's around this axle. <laughs> Good. Well done, Martin. Well done, Martin. I haven't um, made the axle rigid yet. So it was some time since I did this. So you get to learn with me how to do this. The problem now is that this component is not rigid. So I just uh, put um, as built joint. Um, con yeah, as built joint on that one, just a rigid. Uh, no. Does it have to have another? Do I have to? Do I have to select two? Two selected. Okay. Let me try this again. See if it works better this time. Uh, move. <laughs> no. Okay, sorry, this is not going so well for me right now. Um, and boom, he's back. Boom, we missed you. Um, should I just pin? Should I just... I want to lock this thing in the air. Can I just ground it? Let me try to just ground it. Succulent Lord. You have to ground the one part. Okay. Yeah, also Helge is on the ball here. You need to ground the axle. Helge already in Gretzky Hall of Fame skating where the puck is going, but Succulent Lord. Was that the name? Yeah. I think so, yeah. Succulent Lord. Yeah, is also on the ball. So let's see if this did a trick. Yes, okay. So an underground 308 just said here. I wish you would restart the Patreon, even though the project is funded, I still wish we could contribute in some way. And it's true, we don't have any Patreon right now. But the way you can contribute if you want, you can like buy one of these cool t-shirts and stuff like that. Um, and support in that way. That's um, super nice. Yeah, and being here with us is a lot of support also. But uh, yeah, I, I, um, I felt I was letting people down in Patreon. And every time I asked the patrons, there was 4,000 people telling me I didn't let them down. And I still felt I was letting them down. So it it was like, it was purely for like psychological reasons. I, I, I couldn't maintain it. It was, it was, a lot of people got super angry with me when I canceled it. <laughs> because like, we just want to be part of this. So I, I really, in a way I didn't read the room, but I, I, I read myself. Um, so you can... Here you can see that it's touching, not the reader. So let me redesign the reader. So it means a lot to hear. Yeah. Um, I kind of canceled it on an emotional whim as well. It's <laughs> it was it was the most expensive decision I made in my whole life. I, I can I can assure you, it was going well. The Patreon. Yeah. So, um, but if you like support in a way where you uh, like buy a t shirt, you actually get something physical for it, also. Yeah. I have to remove this. And we did actually enable. I was always uh, like. A little like skeptical into the super chat function. We never had super chats before. We enabled the super chats as a way of um, making up for for the uh, patron uh, not being there. Mm. So that's also like we want to read out like every interesting thing. We don't really want people to pay for attention. I always felt that felt a little wrong with the super chat. So 
the way we're thinking with, with war, our super chat is more like a street musician who have a hat. Uh, like if you're getting value out, out of, out of, uh, this CAD performance, then we have enabled the super chat as, uh, as a way, uh, for that. So that's another, if you don't want, um, physical items. Yep. Uh, save, save, save. Okay. <laughs> so let me see here. Where is my, this one? I just want to add this. So I think the cool thing is that if I ground this component as well, I ground this one and I create a revolute joint between, um, this and this. Wow. Looked cool, right? Oh, yes. <laughs> <It's just laughs> moved and rotated. Um, then I think I can just grab this body so I don't have to go into the move command. Let's see. No. Sometimes you can just grab a part and rotate it. So let's check now. Um, no, I ground. Did I ground the wrong thing? Are these in the same? What? Are these joint? Did I choose join here? There we have it. There we have the issue. This should have been new body. Um, honestly, this always took me some time to figure out. So please, um, please bear with me. Um, but it's worth it. I want to delete this joint. Or I want to edit this joint. So I want this joint to be between you. Now my girlfriend chimes in in the chat as well. Hannes, Hannes 3000 is still for sale. So there you have it. <laughs> <laughs> Merch and Hannes is on the table. <laughs> Hannes girlfriend, this is the difference between you and me. I won't sell Hannes. <laughs> And you are just waiting. You're like standing, like looking for anyone, anyone. <laughs> <laughs> this is outrageous. No. <laughs> uh, joint between you and you. Thank you. And now, let's try to move this now. And yeah, now, that's what I couldn't move it before. So now I can just grab this and move it. And now it's not part of the contact set. So let's, can we edit this contact set? Yes, and include this. And now when I move this with the mouse, the other part is reacting. Okay, we're getting there slowly, 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 everyone. Because now I can just move this around so I can reset them manually with the mouse. So, okay, we have achieved that the programming thing is not... Um, so the idea is that a spring will enter here and then boom. So there we go. So that's, that was part one of the contact set. Does anyone know in chat if you can simulate a spring um, in Fusion 360 so the contact set, so the thing will return or it actually will spring down? We don't really need to do that, but, but it, would be, it would be super fun. <laughs> John Alveus. This is the weirdest OnlyFans I've ever watched. 
Let's see if we can sketch out this thing. And I'm realizing this part can probably not be... Okay, I'm realizing I have to uh, program it a little bit differently. Uh, so now we are going to create... Okay, I'm going to make this like very stupidly but you will get the you will get the drift uh, let's say we make a muting lever out here like Yeah, it's kind of niche, this this one. <laughs> um, duh, 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 duh. So we're breaking the timeline. I don't care. Right now, I do not care. Once the contact set programming is on, we should be able to like move, like then we can start move things around to see the movement. Mm -hmm. um, ah, revert position, of course. And now once again, we're going to extrude this with um, offset, which earlier in the stream, we had someone who wanted actually to mar marry the offset command <laughs> and this is why i hope we get invited to the wedding <laughs> so even if it's niche it's f there's actually people out there it's into it uh let's see we have this where am i we're here let's create a component of this and let's mirror this component. Mirror plane should be the drum plane. This one. No, I would like actually to join these two. Okay, okay, okay. let's try this. Join, it's gonna join on both sides now. So let's, let's do it ugly. Children, close your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> because this is not going to be pretty there we go that we have the muting lever We have some broken stuff in the timeline. I don't really understand why. Let's go back here. Edit feature, missing bodies. Okay. We're going to delete this one. See if everything breaks. And you can see that this is not working properly now. We want this to pivot. So we want to ground this component. Ground. 
and then we want to add uh, a join between this thing and this thing and I want you to go back into the middle like that and now when I move this it behaves like a lever Ooh! And wow! Nice, huh? We all almost have the, I recognize, almost like the birds we have on the MMX, right? <laughs> Starts to look like birds now. Uh -huh. Okay, yeah, now I know which one you mean. <laughs> but now this is not behaving. Um, so now we have to think about what we're doing over here. This one cannot be grounded. It's going to be held in place in another way. Unground. And we have to say that you, you are jointed to you. But I want you to be in the middle. So now, what happens now? Okay, we're getting there. Mountain Dog 84, I have to agree with the others. Why is the stick starting from the down position? Wouldn't that make it harder to time correctly? Uh, so, so this thing, good question. And if my contact set is working, we're gonna be able to um, clarify. I have to redo the... Um, We have to tension the spring. Um, this is the default position. And uh, when it's at the top of this triangle, it will be at the highest position. And when the triangle runs out, then it's where the note is hitting. So probably it's a little bit semantics, like right before the note is going to be struck, the stick will be in the top position. Let, let me show you. Um, Create components from this. Let's ground this. Let's do a joint. What happened here? Why is that hollowed out? Is this thing not in my... Oh, it's grounded. Let's unground this. And let's hide the sketch because it's in the way. Save. Save. Now you all can cheer in the chat. Woo! Also, Fusion was nice, actually. It was like, it didn't allow me to make a joint with a grounded component. I've never seen that before. So let's line them up like this. Yeah, this took me a lot of time, <laughs> but it, it actually always do. Okay, now that's behaving and that is behaving. Okay, okay. So there's one thing that is not behaving now. And it's that this thing is not reacting to the angle. Ooh, I know how to do that. Uh, I have to add I have to add something to this <clears throat> so won't that be a problem you yeah, know the springs are gonna pull it later yeah 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 that will work. So I'm just going to um, I'm just going to fix something for now. Yeah. Um, we had a nice message here from Feud Fight. Feud Fite. Since the Patreon is cancelled and I really feel like you were not letting us down, consider this my Patreon contribution. Keep up the awesome work. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. I, I felt I, I 
I sold the butter before I made it, basically, with, with the Marmachine X. <laughs> <laughs> it's a Swedish expression. I tried to translate it to English and that didn't, didn't, <laughs> didn't end up well. Um, but I'm very happy to hear that. Um, and Mark Niederman, is the theme that Martin was trying to play on the music box when he saw that the muting mechanism could be on the crankshaft, the charge cheer trumpet call? <laughs> 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 yes. Yes. <laughs> Let's go for that. Yes. yes, it was. So I think I can already demonstrate it a little bit here. And it's that right now, if this wheel spins, the drum will be charged. And when we cross this position right here, the spring will pull this. Okay. Ah. The spring will make the drumstick hit the drum right here. But, so now I can't, okay. But when I don't want this mechanism to play, I, mi I miss my springs. That's why this is not really working out. Uh, I can do this and this should not touch this. It's still touching, but it's because, okay, so this, doesn't really work if I don't have a way to make like a spring connection. I do you think is there a spring contact set in Fusion 360? I don't think so. It would be amazing if it was. New component. Let's just try here. Reverse position. I'm gonna make uh, two parts. And I want to I want to connect them with a spring. Boom. I don't I don't think I think I'm on a goose chase here, but so this is where we come to physics simulation actually from Algorix and the PC standing here <laughs> that we're gonna do a physics simulation on. Um, it's going to be a super fun tool to learn. I hope it will be an efficient tool and not a rabbit hole. So what kind of joint types do we have? Mr. B Fox 1775 just put the lever arm on the first pivot. Yeah, th this pivot doesn't move, so I can't mute then. Mm. I can't mute the way I want to mute. I can mute by pulling it up, but then the spring is always... The genius behind this is that the spring will be resting when the thing is muted. That's what I took from... So I can mute by tensioning the spring, but then the spring is um, tensioned during mute. So I'm going to hit my pause screen and I'm going to go and Google um, Spring Contact Set Fusion 360. Model a working spring in Fusion 360. Advanced tip. Spring returning components in joint. I am using contact sets. So let's let's share this. Spring returning components in joints. Hi everyone. Um I am using contact sets between the two components. Drives the rest of the motion. Um The spring I'm talking about is not model. Please note the two springs in the screenshots are another area of the Yes, use the rest positioning setting within the joint limits. Here we go. Wow. Edit joint limits. Rest position setting within the joint limit. Is it that easy? Hi, thanks for that. It's working, but still a problem. The part seems to jump around. It would be easier if you could share the design. That's always, that's yeah, yeah. <laughs> always the standard. All Fusion 360. Edit joint limits. Okay, 
we have the dog has gotten a trail on us <laughs> <laughs> I can sense it I can sense it <laughs> joint limits I don't know if it's it, if, if it will will help us um okay so hmm joint limits Let's first learn joint limits on this joint. Um, where is this joint? I want to see the joint. Sometimes I think it's um, a little bit buggy. Because it's not, this I think it's a bug in Fusion 360. When I click this flag somewhere in the browser tree, it should show me where this joint is. I can edit it like this, of course. Motion. Where is the limit done? Do I have the wrong limit type? Joint alignment. Information. So, any skilled join jointers in the? I don't see too much joint talk right now here. Pin slot. Ah, component rotates around another planar. So on the Fusion 360 thing, what kind of joint is this? It's a slide joint. Okay, hang on. That's it. It's another joint type. Mm, Maximilian Fries need to right-click the joint in the browser. Yeah, the, it, I didn't find it in the browser. So, I'm going to try to join. Okay, yeah, Mar Marcin Bator, Bator. The motion type must be slide, not rotate. Ah, oh, thank you. Motion is slider. Ooh, that already looks like a spring. <laughs> Woo! Position. Uh, let's just say yes. Here's the slider. Edit joint limits. Oh, I never seen this. Oh. So you had a little strange because it's not in the edit. So this is like, why do they do this? Here, edit joint. You don't have you don't have these options, but they put a secret little thing there. <laughs> edit joint limits. Um. So animate. Minimum. So I want you to. This is. Is this basically a spring? I don't think it will give a spring action. What happens if I put 20? Edit joint limits. Maximum 20. Rest. No. Okay. Uh, uh, probably minus 20. I'm, I'm putting minimum and maximum at the same place. That's what I did wrong here, I think. Okay. This, what is this? Rest zero. Now we no have... rest. <laughs> <laughs> zero rest here. So now we have... Let me go to this little cleaner screen for all of you lovely Gretzkys out there. Oh, it is animating. Oh, it, wow. It's slow. Okay, let's give this a little more rock and roll. <laughs> 
Here we go. <laughs> chicka, 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 chicka. Yeah, baby. Why is it so slow? And how do I determine where's the, like, where's the, ang what is happening in here? <laughs> Something is moving. You will need to figure this out, Martin. Yeah. It's six o'clock now. Yeah, this is. Okay, everyone. This I, is. I just think uh, I will pull up. So we got some more in the Dropbox we should just look at. Okay, let, let me just wrap this up first. Do it. Um, this was. This, there has been some amazing progress today, actually. Um, I ended up here on a rabbit hole with um, what I'm trying to do here is a contact set that will show you how this muting mechanism is meant to be. I'm not so experienced in using contact sets, so I am not figuring it out yet. I think off stream, I will learn if I can make springs act like um, this sliding thing. Um, that might be possible. So this is awesome. And most of all, we found out that this pivot point could be the same pivot point as the crankshaft, as this shaft. Oof. So this is what we were, what we were cutting with these little blue things. I'm just going to show you. Um, so this is like the latest version. Uh, and if we are using these uh, super cool herringbone timing belts, uh, because it preys on noise. <laughs> As equally fun every time. Yes. And we also made, uh, today we actually made the setting of the internal. So this little thing together with these holes is the super easy way to from behind the machine, change the internal uh, interaction between, change the position of the top drum with 0 0.8 millimeter increments on surface level. And yeah, uh, this is uh, the parametric design. And for those joining, this is our blocked design. And for those very nervous out marbles on the floor, we have solved that problem on the Machine 3. <laughs> <laughs> no need to worry. So yeah, by the end of the day, I ended up in a contact set rabbit hole. But part of our idea with these streams is that I want you here with me in the rabbit holes this time. So thank you for, um, for that. And let's now conclude with checking the latest ideas from all the CAD Gretzkys out there. So let's see, can you see it there? The concept is to mute. Oh, it's about what we're working on now. The concept is to mute drum beaters um, individually. Each drum beater is composed of the arm rhythm beater. They can either move individually or together, depending if the mechanism is engaged or not. The black box in the sketch is such a mechanism. It could be a pin. Um, yeah, I, th I think you're on the same idea as I am here. Yeah? Yes. Now we've updated new one belt system we looked at the earlier ones yeah so that's still not going to be the oh 512 teeth now i'm seeing now i'm seeing um so the problem 64 teeth yeah okay okay yeah this would work um, this would be the correct um, gear ratio. 8 times 64 is 512. Um, the thing I don't like with it is the um, lack of leverage advantage that we have on, on the loop drum. And 512 teeth on this timing belt that we're using um, will be a diameter... Because you can you can't just make them smaller. Then then you we would need to have another uh, belt, and the diameters would be off. So um, when 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 I calculated, so I did this um, when I did a calculation of, of the diameter. So you can see the pull is here. Um, the diameter of a gear is controlled by the number of teeth. 
So meaning 512 teeth um, with a pitch of 14 millimeter would be uh, quite simply um, 14 times 512. Uh, 14 times 512. No, I'm th I'm thinking wrong here. Your programming wheel would be like five meters big, uh, but but I like the idea. The thought behind it to remove parts is like spot on. Um, and if you make the teeth smaller, so your programming wheel is the correct size, the first pulley will be minimal. Then the first pulley will, will be one centimeter. Uh, so it's just too much tooth, uh, maybe not that bad, but like three centimeters. Okay, what's this? Muting arm, single axle for beater and muting lever. Pin on the mute. Holds arm up. Yeah, so this is the simpler way to mute, but this would require the spring to be tensioned in the muting position. This is the genius that I've stolen from Florian. And in our uh, version, let me show you uh, quickly. Where were we? Um, where were we? Drum kit assembly. In this version, the springs will be resting in the muting position. So you don't have, say I have to mute 20 channels at the same time, which means I have to tension 20 springs at the same time. With, with your idea. And this is, is the simpler way, but I don't like to have the springs under tension uh, during mute. Um, based on posts from Karbash, uh, Jeff did to Martin's CAD dimensions. We should show this a little bit bigger, actually. Gears instead of the current design with six axles. Um, yeah, so this is team gears, basically. Team gears? Yeah, I understand Team Gears. Um, trust me, is this a... I don't fully see it. Um, wait, where's the crank? So, based on... Adapted to Martins. Use gears instead of the current belt design with six axles. Yeah, Team Gears. My heart is with Team Gears. <laughs> programming wheel, kick drum, router. Yeah, what's the text? Kick drum in programming wheel allows for massive... Kick drum in... Oh, now I see it. Kick in other ways unused space. Probably best combined with hubless design. Hubless design plus kick drum inside programming wheel is cool. <laughs> <laughs> that is like... So, so before when I saw the hubless design, I was like, it, it's only interesting if it really solves a, a, a big problem. And I think uh, like this is like a candidate for a problem like that. I really love when you come up with these crazy things. Imagine seeing like a floating programming wheel with a kick drum inside. Um, yeah, I have to marinate on that. <laughs> but I ab absolutely love it. And I just want to uh, read a really nice comment here at the end uh, from Slice of Sparta. Martin, we weren't buying butter. We were supporting you on your awesome butter making journey because <laughs> your butter and butter making process is more awesome than everyone else's. Oh, thank you. Churn on, Martin. <laughs> Churn on. I love it. Yeah, okay. so... A lot to marinate on, and thank you so much for being with us. Let's head, let's head, um, let's call it a day for today. And um, yeah, as always, everyone is so it's so wonderful to work with you live. And uh, yeah, so check the link in the description to suggest your own suggestions. Keep on iterating. I will post the CAD files as soon as I have time over on the website in a document central so we can interact more and more and more in, in this crazy project. And off stream, I'm going to learn more about contact sets and hopefully be able to show you the muting mechanism next uh, time. Oh yeah. yeah, tomorrow be ready, be ready for it. Martin. Thanks for today, Hannes 3000. Oh, it was my pleasure as yeah. always, my dear, dear friend. Let's call it a day and take care.
All the best. <laughs>